Sazamo, Olomo Saigue, Tobis Sazamo, Olomo Saigue, Sazamo Sazamo, Sazamo Sazamo, Sazamo Sazamo, 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 Atu de Emilia, Afuka Mina Emilia, Tambula Tambula, Nabo Sazamo, Tambula Tambula, Nabo Sazamo, Gambo Ruanero, Oruanero. Morinya ya Yesu Intekwa Oku Angola Kwemera kwe Kwenwa de kwe Morinya ya Yesu Iku Angola Iku Angola Iku Angola Iku Angola Oluarero Oluarero Iku Angola Waluwa mani Waluwa mani Agazu kisa Mokama fe Yesu kisa Oku fe magome Agamani Genga kumako Agamani, Gaga Kusinkana, what you wait to say, and to Kusinkana, what you are my photo, Aga Kusinkana, what you are my Aga Kusinkana, Tocha de Kubonabona, Tocha de Kusavita, Tocha de Kuremera, Leko Sayaba, Laga Dabagaya, Leko Saya, Laba Dagaya, what you are Buangosi, over the Mosang Bias, what you are Buangosi, over the Mosang Bias. Amanya go kuzukira, gaku koma ko, wani kemi kono, yita mani, ago kuzukira, yita mani, ago kuzukira, yita mani, ago kuzukira, wani kemi kono, yita mani, ago kuzukira, yita mani, ago kuzukira, yito mukisa, ago kuzukira, wani wamukisa, ago kuzukira, wani wamukisa, ago kuzukira. Wali wa mukisa, ogo kuzukira, yeto mukisa, ogo kuzukira, yeto mukisa, ogo kuzukira, yeto mukisa, ogo kuzukira. Wali wa mukisa, ogo kuzukira, wali wa mukisa, ogo kuzukira, wali wa mukisa. La kosekete, liba gada baya, rana dababa. Wali wa mukisa, ogo kuzukira, yeto. Mukisa, ogo kuzukira, yeta mafuta, ago kuzukira, yeto kuganja, ogo kuzukira, yeto bu angosi, ogo kuzukira, wari wamani, ago kuzukira, wari wamafuta, ago kuzukira, yeta mani, ago kuzukira, yeta mafuta, ago kuzukira, la kosaya, la badaya, shanda dababa. Shanda Gadabaya, what you wait to say? A joke was okay. Have you a family mojo? Be so kidanate. Have you a family family? Be so kidanate. Obufum of Rafa. Was so kidanate. Relationship is Zafa. She's so kidanate. Connection is Zafa. She's so kidanate. She's so kidanate. Be a kid of his own kid. Be a kid of his own kid. Be a kid of his own kid. Bakastoma, abakumula ko, bakoma wo, basukira, bakoma wo, basukira, obukisa, obuwa de guafa, kuda mo bula mo, businesses, esiba de zafa, kampanisi, esiba de zafa, oruarero, oruarero, zizukira na te. Zizu kira na te, zizu kira na te, zizu kira na te, zizu kira na te, zizu kira na te. Lebe soya, lebe soya. Aba na bo, bata mama kesi na te. Aba ba 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 ya, shanda na ba ba ba, shaga na ba ya. Wali wamu kisa, okuri muri nyanya. Wali wamu kisa, okuri muri nyanya yes. Wali wamu kisa, okuri muri nyanya yes. Yeto mu kisa. Oguri muri nya Yesu, yeto mukisa. Oguri muri nya Yesu, langiri romu kisa. Oguri muri nya Yesu, yeto mukisa. Oguri muri nya Yesu, yeto 
Mukisa, Oguri Murinya Yesu, La Kosege Debe, Branda Daba Baba, Wali Kemi Kono, Yeto Mukisa, Oguri Murinya Yesu, Yeto Mukisa, Oguri Murinya Yesu, Abange, Wali Wamukisa, Oguri Murinya Yesu, La Kosaya, The Bible says, At the mention of His name, Every knee bow, Every tile, Confess that his name is Jesus. That his name is Jesus. There is a blessing in his name. There is a blessing of 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 his name. Somebody call the blessing of his name. Somebody declare the blessing of his name. There is a blessing of his presence. There is a blessing of his presence. All oh, about Baba. There is a blessing of his presence. Somebody call the blessing of his presence. Somebody call the blessing of his presence. Somebody call. Somebody call. Somebody call. Somebody call the blessing. All about of his presence. Jesus, no curse will stand again. No curse will stand again. No demonic activity will stand again. No powers of darkness will stand again. No witchcraft will stand again. La Kosaya, Raga Yabada, Reko Sedeva, Landa Dababa. No reproach will stand again. No reproach. We'll stand again. We call the fire of the Holy Ghost. We call the fire of the Holy Ghost. We burn in them. We burn in them. We burn in them. We burn in them. When it came in, you told me, you know, I need that you can't know. Oh, ine da chika tono yo. Oh, ine da chika tono yo. La kosa gadaba. Yeta ito muri yo. Yeta ito muri yo. Enda gano se chizikis. Tuzoja. Ebiye chika tu biocha. Wane kemi kono. Tambula tambula. Gabo ito muri yo. Where you are right now. 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 Every sickness we burn you to the root in the name of Jesus. Every delay we burn you in the name of Jesus. Every limitation, every attack of the enemy against the church, we burn you. Every attack of the enemy against my pastors, Baba and Jessica Kayana, and the entire family, we burn you. Omni Ogocha, Omni Ogocha, Omni Ogocha, people of Akasoma. Oh, my God. Omori <laughs> As they will go to the house, as to soja, to soja, to soja, to soja, to soja, to soja, Omuri ogocha, omuri ogocha, yeta ito omuri o, yeta ito omuri o, yeta ito omuri o, shini komuri o, shini komuri o, la kosa ya, la badaga daga ya, re kosa ya, chawandi kibwa, kuli chemuna rinyaga ko, ma kosa ya, kuli chemuna simuriza, kuli chemuna sumura da kosi, lemo kolo, chena sumuru aga, oruarero. Tosomolomurio, 
Yes, I say, Oluadero, Otebra, Oluadero, Osumura, Oluadero, Otebra, 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 and you get a sit up, and you get a Sikutoka, and you get a sit up, and you get a Sikutoka, or Motorogoma, Makosaya, Tola Girokozara, Tola Girokozara, Tola Girokozara, Shagadabaga, Rakasaba, Lekosaya, Morido Murio Murio, Morido Murio, Fire of Dolivos, Fire of Dolivos, Consuming Fire, Consuming Fire, Somebody call the Consuming Fire, Somebody call the Consuming Fire, Today, Today, Today. Call the fire, all the Holy Ghost, consuming fire. Let it consume, let it consume every cancer, let it consume every HIV, let it consume every barrenness. Let the fire, all the Holy Ghost, somebody shout fire, somebody shout fire, somebody shout fire, somebody shout fire. Somebody shot fire, 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 lift up your hands, shot fire, call upon the fire of the Holy Ghost, call upon the fire, the fire, the consuming fire of the Holy Ghost, hepatitis B is leaving you. Every pain is leaving you. Call the fire. Call the fire. Call the fire. You told me. 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 Your <laughs> Tamula Tamula, the way Tomorio, Tamula Tamula, the way Tomorio, Tamula Tamula, the way Tomorio, the Tai Tomorio, the Tai Tomorio, the Tai Tomorio, the Cosada, the Badabacadaba, the Badacadaba, the Senda de Babea, Senda de Babea, Senda de Babea, Siabaya, 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 Riabaya, Second de Bea. One can be corner, one can be corner. Go to the Visiva, go to the Visiva, go to the Visiva Yachikono, go to the Visiva Yachikono, go to the Visiva Yachuma, 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 go to the Visiva Sola Morido, 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 before Mama Cargo, ah, Marco Sayaba, Laba Daba Daba, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, because I'm on your way, follow me, on your way, follow me, 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 Get out! 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 Get out!
Jesus. Get out. Go back, go back, go back. 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 Go back, go back. Go back, go back. Go back, go back. Oh, Murio. Aya, 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 aya. Otewa, Otewa, Osumurua, Otewa, Osumurua. Ebi akwa temi kere, Ebi abita, Ebi abita, Ebi akwa temi kono, Ebi abita, Ebi kenge, Eba nebi akuria, Biku faako, Ebi kenge, Eba nebi akuria, Biku faako, Biku faako, Biku faako. Ebiyakuriya. Ebiyakuronola, <laughs> What he came to call over What he came to call over the Omo. What he came to call over the Omo. Direct the word. Afu kami de imirira. Atu de imirira. What he came to call over. What he came to call over. Ogena kutamro wanona. Ngoi to Omo diyo. Emirundi abiri moena. Ngoi nyari ayes. Kuku abiri moena. Otani koko langirira. Omo kisa. Ngoi nyari ayes. Otani koko langirira. Beagara katonda. One, two, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
In the name of Jesus, every amagero, every money on bio, every amagero, every money on bio, all wadero, all dayo, all the majority sing, nangi ya jori, nangi ya jori, amachagero, katonda, akufulo majority sing, katonda, akufulo majority sing, katonda, akufule tendo, katonda, akufule tendo. Nangiria Jori, Nangiria Jori, Katonda, Aku for the Tendo, Katonda, Aku for the Tendo, somebody decree, somebody declare, somebody decree, somebody declare, your story is changing because of the blood of Jesus. Oh, your destiny is changing because of the blood of Jesus. I speak miracles. I speak miracles. Signs and wonders. Somebody receive. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your anointing. Receive your favor. Receive your money. Somebody lift up your hands. Receive from Jesus. Receive from Jesus. From today. Blessed one, I prophesy from today they will call you the blessed one. They will call you the blessed one. They will call you the blessed one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your hands and say in the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. From today. Sibahudira from today. Sibahudira from today. Shout it loud from today. They will call me the blessed one. They will call me the blessed one. Wani kemi kono kame. O kufano ruarero. Banam pitanga. Eya webo mukisa. Banam pitanga. Eya webo mukisa. Bana kuita nga, eya webo mukisa, buka buka, oku be nuru, ocha ture, oka me weba de yeso, weba de yeso, weba de yeso, buka buka, jaganya, kube nuru, weta de, duke misinde, weta de, oka me weba de yeso, idi wademe. Weba de Yesu, weba de Yesu, weba de Yesu, weba de Yesu. Wobe mikono, wobe mikono. Duka duka muano, duka duka muano. Bako chokwata, ochi wobe mupanga. Oga me weba de Yesu, oro musalaba. Oga me weba de Yesu, oro musalaba. Weba de Yesu, weba de Yesu. ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガニャ、ジャガ
Your neighbor is your silver jacking around. This morning is yours. Jaganya. Celebrate. Kuvange chama gero chochi mazo kuba ako. Your miracle is over there with you. Ngenda kuba la sat. At the count of three. We tare wanona. Walk around. Ogenda kutwala yeda chika namba. You're going to take a whole minute. Ogenda kutwala yeda chika namba. You're going to take a full minute. Ogbenduru. Shout. Ogambe we bari. I say thank you, Jesus. Amazedo, yamazedo kufuro bujuri. He has already turned you into a testimony. Ngambi yamazedo kufuro bujuri. He has already made you a testimony. Katinja galo mutende reze. I want you to pray. Katinja galo rekane. I want you to shout. He is risen. I took it there. Muri nyari ayes. In the name of Jesus. Katinja galo beko chokwa. I want you to get hold of something. Wait, I don't want to know now. Walk around. Eno space yo. This is your space. Neiba mu ise ko socket. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you ready? Wait, uh, uh. Are you ready? Wait, Siba uri, are you ready? Wait, Are you ready? Wait, are you ready? Wait, are you ready? Wait, Siba uri, are you ready? Wait, are you ready? Wait, are you ready? One. In few minutes, if you are still home, we have already started. In the name of Jesus, come and join us. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus.
We are not just a church. We are a family. We are a community that loves Jesus. And we want you to experience the Holy Spirit in a powerful way. We are a family, we are a community that loves Jesus, and we want you to experience the Holy Spirit in a powerful way. Here. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus.
We are not just a church. We are a family. We are a community that loves Jesus. And we want you to experience the Holy Spirit in a powerful way.
resurrection of our Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Mulamu, hallelujah. Kuwengalo so boat, 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 boat. Just keep clapping your hands.
Și ziua ce mutire Și cali mai a cincea Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for Calvary, Lord. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. How precious is the flow that washed me white as snow. I give you praise, Jesus. I worship you, King of Kings. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. I lay myself at your feet, an offering of gratitude. me at Calvary. Here I am. Pick me up, wash me, cleanse me now. 
Time say I lay myself. Lift up your hands and tell him I lay myself. I lay myself. Welcome to this Kids Church program and wherever you are, happy Easter Sunday. My name is Anjane Samba and I'm with these amazing women of God, Trinity and Abigail. And we are here to share on Easter and the true meaning of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for everyone, for mankind. And these guys, I believe they should introduce themselves. Uh, so Trinity, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, talk about yourself briefly. Um, praise God, everyone. My name is Trinity Manjana Karabirunji. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm humbled to be here once again. And I'm, and I'm going to be sharing about Easter. Amen. Amen. Hello, everyone. My name is Abigail Nelaine Babazi. And I'm very happy to be here once again. It's a very beautiful Sunday. Happy Easter to everyone who's watching, wherever you are. It's not to encourage you to tell your friends, your family, everyone who's around you to join into the Kids Sunday service. And I believe by the end of this service, our lives shall not be left the same ever again. Amen. 
So thank you all for introducing yourselves. And once again, happy Easter Sunday, wherever you are. I know for some of you out there who are watching, you're in different time zones. Probably it's evening for you or it's afternoon. But wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying your Easter. And one thing we should understand that Easter is really about remembering the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and not only his death, but also his resurrection. Because without his resurrection, our faith in Jesus would be in vain. It doesn't make any sense. And later on, we're going to discuss in depth with scripture about that. So I hope you're enjoying yourselves. And we're going to start with First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. And if you have your Bibles with you, open that scripture. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 3 to 4. Um, Abigail, are you able to read it? Or let me read it. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And Abigail is going to, sorry, Trinity, will read, uh, if you have, a, I believe you have a different version, NIV, right? Yes. So you're going to read that same scripture, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. And if you have your notebooks and pens, please take note. I believe you're going to learn a lot, as we have also learned a lot uh, by studying these scriptures and being inspired by the Holy Spirit. So I believe you should also get your notebooks and pens and study more. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to, to 4. For what, for what I received, I passed on to you as of vast importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. So I'm going on to verse 12, same chapter, verse 12, which says, Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and our faith is also empty. And the fact is this. Yes, Jesus Christ died, but without his resurrection, his sacrifice would have been in vain. You know, through Jesus' death and resurrection, we're able to see hope. You know, when he died, it seemed like a very hopeless situation. If you read the Bible clearly, his disciples literally lost hope. Some of them even started quitting ministry. They started giving up. For example, Simon Peter, he said he decided to go back and start fishing again, something he left about three years ago. And Jesus had to literally raise her from the dead to prove to them that there is still hope in the end of the tunnel. And uh, let me read some of my notes here. The foundation of Christianity, our faith in God, is death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice of dying on the cross is all in vain. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have hope for experiencing eternal life. Now some of you wonder, what is eternal life? Eternal life is a life that God has designed for us through his word. And some of us think we're only going to experience eternal life only in heaven. Well, God wants us to experience eternal life even here on earth. Of course, there's so many things going on in this world. There's a lot of chaos, havoc happening, all kinds of wars, rumors of wars. And you're wondering, why is all this pain happening? Why is all this chaos happening? Well, it's already predetermined. It's already something that God prophesied in the book of Luke concerning the last days. He said that, do not be um, surprised when you see these things happening. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, these things are already prophesied about. But even in the midst of all that, God is still able to provide for you. God is still able to, and is going to be able to help you experience that eternal life, the life he has designed you to experience. And that eternal life includes uh, health, financial provision. Some of you don't believe in financial provision. But the Bible says um, in the book 
of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. <clears throat> you can turn there. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. It says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus is willing to provide for you everything you need. And that's part of the package of salvation, financial provision, because he knows you need it. How are we able to do ministry without this financial provision? For us to be, the, be able to be on set required financial provision. So at one point, you really have to step out in faith and believe that even in the midst of the financial crisis, God can still provide. Also, part of eternal life includes peace, healing, breakthrough, deliverance. And when it comes to peace, we have to refer to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Of course, everything in this world that surrounds us gives us a good reason to be anxious, gives us a good reason to live in anxiety, to live in a fretful way. And that every time we allow anxiety to take over, we lose our focus on God and focus on our problems. And whenever we focus on our problems, we become distracted. And therefore, we're unable to have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you choose to live in fear, you'll be trapped. If you choose to live in fear, you'll not experience the fullness of eternal life. You'll not be able to experience the fullness of peace, not until you let go of your fears, not denying the fact that you're going through that situation, but choosing to rely on God that yes, even though I'm going through this crisis, I choose to believe that God, God's word is true. And I'm not just saying things to just encourage you or to seem like a motivational speaker, but I'm also speaking from experience and I'm still learning over time. For example, some people out there that are going through a lot of traumatizing experiences, probably are going through abuse at home, and you go to church or to school and act like everything is fine. But only God can give you true peace. Only God can give you true hope and a future. And Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says something very powerful. Abigail, are you able to turn to that scripture? Jeremiah 29 11. If you have your notebook, please note it down. Um, Jeremiah 29 11 it states for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a future that you hope for so despite the situation you're going through God has great plans for you some of you are looking for peace in the wrong places and you don't know your Bibles well enough to know that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You cannot get peace from antidepressant pills. You cannot get peace from using witchcraft. You cannot get peace from delving into the new age. You cannot get peace from using crystals or anything. I mean, there's so many people out there on the internet who are very deceived. And the more you use witchcraft, the more it destroys you. Trust me, I heard a man of God say, that when the devil gives you something using his right hand, he'll take it away using the left hand. In other words, he never gives anything for free. You're seeking for money, you're seeking for peace, you're seeking for health in the wrong places. But trust me, the devil will, t give, will t give you that thing and you think it's satisfying, but he'll take away much more than you expect. You need to rely on God and be honest with God. Be real with God and let him know the fact that I am going through depression, Lord. I need your help. Usually whenever I'm going through stress, I pray. And I really become honest with God. I literally cry out to God and pour out my heart to, heart to him in prayer. Because I know that whenever I pray, the Holy Spirit comforts me. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. So you need to rely on the Holy Spirit every time you're going through these depressing moments. 
You cannot get peace from people. Yes, the Holy Spirit can use a person, but sometimes people can disappoint you. So you need to rely on the peace of God. You need to rely on the Holy Spirit. Develop a personal relationship with the Lord. So much that even if no one's there to be able to comfort you, you're still able to be comforted by his word. When you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit will start to speak to you and you will be comforted. For example, there was a time in my life where I was going through a lot of depression due to all kinds of satanic attacks. That was because at that time of my life, I was backslidden and that was during lockdown. So during that time, I was going through a lot of spiritual attack because I was backslidden and I allowed so many things in my life. And you know, whenever you stay away from God, whenever you leave the presence of God, you are opening doors for the devil. You leave God, you abandon his word, you abandon prayer, and that is a very dangerous state. You are vulnerable to satanic attack. You are vulnerable to making decisions that you regret. That's how someone can be on fire for God and still marry wrong. That's how someone can be on fire for God and still end up with the wrong friends. That's how someone can be on fire for God and still end up doing drugs because they're abandoning the presence of God. They're abandoning his word, which is the only source of peace, which is the only source of comfort, and they're looking for comfort in the wrong places. Now, for me, I, of course, didn't go as far as taking drugs or anything, but I was full of fear. I could not even sleep. I actually became envious that other people would sleep in the house apart from me. I would just stay awake because I was too afraid to close my eyes. Every time I would close my eyes, I would see something. If it was night or it was dark, I would open my eyes and still see something, some sort of a demon. And you think like, uh, I think I'm just imagining. But you're still seeing it coming to you. Then you realize, okay, this is real. So you need the peace of God to be delivered. You need Jesus. So if you're out there and you're going through that same situation, I know for a fact that only God can rescue you. No man can rescue you. Yes, God can use people. Like for my case, God used my parents. They said to really intercede on my behalf because I opened up to them and was telling them, look, mom and dad, this is actually what I'm going through. I am depressed. That's a fact that won't change. I'm actually depressed. So they really realized the situation was bad. So they started praying for me, but also I had to put in effort. I had to put in effort. I had to seek God for myself. Some of you out there are pastors, kids, and you think, wow, my parents will pray for me. Trust me, there are some things that your parents will never do for you. And you, there's times you grow up, you'll become a man of your own. You'll have a family of your own. You Probably some of you are going to be pastors or businessmen. You have companies on your own. You can imagine all that responsibility on your back. You're still depending on your spiritual father and mother to pray for you. Yes, they may pray for you, but not all the time. So you really need to have a personal relationship with the Lord. So I started to seek God personally and really fought a lot of things. It wasn't easy. But in the end of the day, God helped me. And right now, I'm full of the peace of God. I'm full of joy. I'm no longer full of fear. I have peace. Those days, I used to be afraid of even switching off the light. I'd sleep with lights on. My parents would complain, but I know why I leave the lights on. But now, I have the peace of God, and I want you to experience that peace. How do you get it? Through relying on God's word. If you're not yet born again, you still have a chance to give your life to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and later on in the program, we're going to do the salvation prayer. Do not miss out on this opportunity. So all that comes the package of salvation. Jesus died on the cross not just to prove a point that he's all powerful. Then he rose from the dead to show that he's much more powerful than all other gods we ever known of. Buddha, whichever other god that's there. So we need to know that. Jesus died on the cross so that we can receive the blessings of God. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 23, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. The only way, the reason why we are all sinners before we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is because of that sin nature. Adam, when he made the mistake of disobeying God, the sin nature affected everyone we inherited that sin nature and we were born as slaves to the devil whether we like it or not but when we choose to give our lives to jesus christ we are 
we are exchanging that spiritual death for the life of Jesus Christ. Of course, when God told them, if you eat the forbidden, the tree, the food, fruit from the forbidden tree, you will surely die. What he meant was spiritual death. Disconnection from God is spiritual death. That's why when you disconnect yourself from the presence of God, you disconnect yourself from prayer, you realize spiritually you're dying. You're no longer having that peace. You no longer have that connection with God. You are spiritually dying, and I'm not trying to condemn you, but I'm trying to let you know you need to repent before it's too late. So spiritual death disconnects you from God, and when you're disconnected from God, you face a lot of problems. You're vulnerable to the attack of the devil. That's why many people suffer. There, of course, there are many reasons, but one of them is because of disconnecting yourself from the true source. Yes, everyone goes through challenges, even Christians, but us, the difference is that even in the midst of pain, God is still able to make a way for us where there seems no way. Now, if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're just going to have to suffer and suffer, and there's no way out, no hope for you. And the only hope we have is Jesus Christ, his word. His word, even though you may not hear a voice, as long as you rely on his word and you believe, you'll receive that peace. You'll receive that joy back again. So when you discon because of that spiritual death, we're all bound to Satan. But when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you're reconnected to God. And when you're reconnected to God, you're able to access his blessings and the things he wants you to have through his word. His word is Jesus Christ, basically. If you check in John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Then verse 14 um, says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we dwelt his, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And who is the only begotten of the Father? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the word of God. It's as good as me sending you a text message on WhatsApp or Snapchat. You know that this is Angie sending me a text message. You may not see me. You may not even hear my voice. But just the fact I've sent you a text message, you know, okay, Angie has sent me a message, right? Now, just see the word of God like that, a letter from God, a text message from God, a message from the Lord himself. When you read the Bible, just pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Enable me to understand. And whenever you understand the scripture, just know God is speaking to you. You, don't, you may not have a dream. And I'm not, I'm not saying God doesn't speak through dreams. I'm not saying God doesn't speak through visions. There's so many occurrences where God spoke through dreams and visions. You see Paul, Apostle Paul, Simon Peter. God spoke to them through visions. God spoke to them through dreams. But what I'm saying is that that may not always happen, but the most accurate way God speaks is through his word. So you're able to access these blessings through his word. As you believe, as you confess healing over your life, you actually realize it will become a reality to you. It will become a reality to you. And so I just urge you guys to really take it to the word of God. That's the way you're going to start experiencing eternal life practically. God's word gives wisdom, gives wisdom and helps to understand how to handle different situations. For example, in the book of Proverbs, read the book of Proverbs, there's a lot of wisdom there. And that's part of the blessings of God. But the most important thing is that, as I conclude, eternal life will be unlimited in heaven. And that's an amazing thing. Yes, on earth we'll experience eternal life, but the goal is heaven. And trust me, when we get to heaven, we are going to experience unlimited eternal life, unlimited blessings that's beyond human understanding. So that's what I have to say for now. Um, Abigail, if you have anything to say, you can share. Okay, yeah, thank you so much, Angie. I believe that um, a lot has been said and we're being really touched by what you've shared. Um, I just wanted to add something really small to what she stated, and that's about us having gratitude and being thankful for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. Because I believe that um, it's one thing to celebrate Easter, share with your family, your friends, but not having an understanding the true meaning behind Easter and why, why are we celebrating Easter? Why do we have all these public holidays? So I believe it's not just a matter of staying home or like the food and like coming together as a family, but it's about um, 
stopping and just thanking God for the sacrifice that he gave to us. Because I believe it's not um, something that any of us could do to come and sacrifice ourselves for like the whole entire world. I believe that um, in... Before I continue in... Yes. There's a verse that states it's in okay. Isaiah chapter fifty three verse um five to six it says But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we were healed. We all like sheep we have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid him laid on him the iniquity of us all. So all our sins, all our like all our sins were put on one man, and that was the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He sacrificed himself, he was pierced, he was beaten, he was tortured generally for our sake. And I believe that children who are watching, that most of them may not understand truly what's what's the meaning of Easter is. But this is a moment where we have to stop and be thankful to God and thank God for the sacrifice that He for the sacrifice that he made, for laying himself as a living sacrifice for us all. Because before he came, we were sacrificed, people were sacrificing um, things like animals for their sins. Um, priests would come and pray. Like you give, like so many kind of tradition and like so many like religious things were happening back then. But then Jesus comes and he lays himself as a living sacrifice for us all. And I believe that those who are living in condemnation, who are living in in guilt, in fear. I believe, I just want to encourage you and tell you that all that was put on the cross 2,000 years ago, before you were even born, all these things, all this kind of sin were laid on the cross. So we have power upon these kind of things, just like Angie shared. Those who are in captivity of different kinds of, maybe family ties, different kinds of um, sacrifices, I don't know, whatever, like whatever things that like maybe going through your bloodline or maybe um, things that you got attached to I believe that by either by the end of this service we're going to um have a short prayer for like all those kind of things. But I just want to encourage you and tell you all those things were laid on the cross two thousand years ago. So we have authority upon those kind of things and I believe we are not we are not bound to such demons and all those kind of things. So I believe um as we're having um, sharing the food with our friends, with our family, as we're coming together, let's remember that Christ is the reason for the season. So let's share love with our friends, with our family, and I believe that this Easter is going to be very powerful. Happy Easter to all of you once more. Oh, amen. So, uh, what? So, Trinity, do you have anything to share? Yes, I'm going to be reading from the Bible and from Luke chapter 24. Verse 6 to 7. It says, He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Amen. Amen. That's so amazing. So uh, it seems this is the end of the service, but before we end, uh, for those who want to give or sow a seed to this ministry, the numbers on the screen, you can send your seeds. And we are going to put up a worship song. Make sure you enjoy yourselves, worship along with us, and we'll be back. Don't worry, we'll be back soon enough. Stay tuned. Jesus and welcome the Holy Spirit in this place as we dedicate our bodies and our minds to God right now giving him our soul our minds and our spirits hallelujah
just lift your hands and sing it again that chorus Linda Yesu You're all most welcome back. I hope you enjoyed yourselves and I hope you are blessed by that moment of worship. And we're now here and Trinity wants to share something real quick. Trinity, you can now share. Amen. And speaking of that scripture, Luke chapter 9, which says, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. In other words, this scripture is talking about total surrender. We need to totally surrender ourselves to God on a daily basis. It's not something you do once and for all. One day you're on fire for God, the next you don't want to know anything. One day you're studying the word of God or at least putting in effort to get to know God. Then the next day you relax. It's about total surrender to God. Totally surrender your weaknesses to God. We all have weaknesses as human beings. And it's only by the grace of God we are able to live. Because the truth is this. God knows that the word is impossible to follow on your human strength. In your own strength, you cannot do what the word of God tells you to do. That's why you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You can try all you want. Then you end up failing. That's why Apostle Paul says, whatever I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Whatever I want to do, I don't end up doing. The fact is that that's what humanity does. Weaknesses will come and just pull out everything that you have to be able to do what God wants you to do. That's why you need grace. You need the Holy Spirit. And some people have totally misunderstood the grace of God. I wish I knew the scripture for that. I, I know there's a scripture for it, but I forgot what it is. But God has not given us the grace for us to just live in sin all we want and get away with it. God has given us his grace so that we can be able to do what his word tells us to do. And when we realize that, we, real, we get to know that God is actually understanding. Jesus was also human 
a human like us. He was a teenager like you. Can you imagine? He was a teenager like you. So he knows teenage feelings. He knows teenage weaknesses. But yet, he did not sin. He did not sin. And he's trying to show us that, yes, those weaknesses are there. Yes, temptations come. But only through the power of the Holy Spirit will you be able to overcome. And that comes with total surrender. Pray to God every day. And just be like, God, I surrender myself to you. I have this weakness with my tongue. Help me to control my tongue. I have this weakness with my temperament. Help me to control anger. I don't want to fall in sin because of uncontrollable anger. God, I have this weakness in lust. Help me to control this. God, I have this weakness when it comes to this. Help me to control it. Some of you are addicted to drugs and you have tried everything. I mean, everything you have gone to therapists, it has all failed. You have, I'm not saying going to a therapist is bad. I'm not saying that. But probably you have tried it and it hasn't worked out for you. And some of you have tried getting advice from YouTubers and be like, okay, how to quit drug addiction. And probably their advice worked for them, but it's not working out for you. One thing you need to know, it takes God to be free. And sometimes it can be a process. Some people just go for deliverance service and they are free once and for all. That's good. But sometimes the temptation actually comes back. Sometimes the urge actually comes back. The urge to fall into fornication can come back. What will you do when the fornication urge comes back? Will you just give in and be like, well, besides, God will forgive me. That's wrong. The Bible says, God is not, be not, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, that he'll reap. If you keep on sowing in your flesh, you'll reap corruption. But, remember, that's a scripture. What's, that's what it says. But if you sow in the spirit, you'll reap eternal life. In connection to what Jesus did, if you want God's word to manifest in your life, you also have to align yourself to God's word. Don't think God is going to do all the work for you. He won't pray for you. He will convict you through his spirit. He will tell you, hello, don't do that. My word has given you grace. I have given you the strength. I have given you the Holy Spirit. You can actually resist that temptation, but you still run to that sin. Now that's arrogance and pride, and you cannot blame God for that. So you have to literally surrender yourself to God and be like, God, I am actually struggling. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead you to different people. He will lead you to your pastor. He will lead you to your parents. And yes, some parents can be very traditional, but yet they are very hopeful. Right now you think they are very strict, like my parents you can judge them to be very, 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 very strict, yet they're full of the love of God. <clears throat> and they may never tell you why they're struggling with certain areas of their lives. Some of them probably went through a lot of issues because of the mistakes they made when they were teenagers. And now they know much more than you do. They have gone through a lot of experiences, enough to help you to not make the same mistake. So when they tell you, hello, don't be quick to rush into a relationship, be patient, and you're like, nah, really? Nah, the grace is sufficient for me. Besides, even though I fornicate, everything will be fine. Oh, okay. You can do all you want, then end up getting HIV and blame God for getting the HIV. You can't blame God. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So you have to align yourself to the word of God to experience that blessing to experience the eternal life he has promised for you when you receive him as your lord and savior it's not just a matter of god doing everything for you actually have to align yourself to the word of god yes god may forgive you that's true actually he will forgive you he will forgive you but remember whatever you sow is what you reap so before you know it you're reaping consequences of terrible mistakes you will have made if you don't choose the right path now. Some of your parents tell you, please do not get too close to those kinds of friends. They are misleading you. And they're like, nah, man, come on. Let me enjoy my campus life. And then you end up making terrible mistakes. And yet you know better. You know better. You know. And I'm not condemning you if you have been through those things. If you have done them before in the past 
Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Um, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So if you repent, you repent and you're like, God, I come back to you. I repent. God will receive you wholeheartedly. It's not too late. I don't want you to be hopeless and feel like, you know what? That's it. God doesn't love me, so... I might just take my life. Really? God has great plans for you. And he wants to do a new thing in your life. I think it's in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19. If you can um, check out that scripture and someone reads it. Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. Abigail, please read it. Isaiah chapter 43, 43, verse 18 to 19. Okay. Okay. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19. It says, forget the former things, not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a new, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. So God is saying through the scripture, um, let me read verse 19. Okay, actually let me read it in my version. Thank you, Abigail. Mm -hmm. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I mean, it's very impossible to find rivers in a desert. I mean, it's rare. I mean, they're there, actually. They are there, but they are rare, too. So, God, in other words, this scripture means that God is willing to do a new thing. He's willing to transform your life. He is able to transform you. I mean, there was a time when I was really doing a lot of things to myself that I knew were wrong, but I had to let it all go. And I really dealt a lot with self-condemnation. Even if I repented, I still felt guilty. And I knew that was not of God. That was the devil making me feel like, well, you know, you've made a lot of mistakes. It's too late for God to change your life. Besides, you can't serve God anymore after what you did back there at house, at your home. I think you just have to forget about God anyway. Besides, no one can call you out to preach. Those are the lies the devil is telling me. But God is saying, let go of the past. I am doing a new thing in your life. Now it shall spring forth. It will happen suddenly. Will you not see it? God wants you to see what he sees through his word. As he opens your eyes and re shows you that he has great plans for you, you have to let go of the past. Let go of the lust because it's going to kill you. When God says that, I, that he wants you to do a new thing, he wants you to let go of everything that's holding you back. The guilt, the shame, the condemnation, the old friends who are misleading you, the lustful desires, you have to let go. And I know it's a process, but as you yield to the word of God, those things leave. The Bible says, delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. When you delight in the Lord and you study his word, you choose to obey his word, you just seek God with all your heart, trust me, your desires will be replaced by God's desires. And eventually the desires God has for you will be your own. Back then, you thought taking drugs was cool. Now, when you have just in your life, you see like it's nonsense. You're like, why did I even think of drugs? Weird. See? Jesus Christ just puts in you a new desire, a new heart. And you feel like these things of lust, fornication, they don't make sense to you anymore. Even though you may be tempted in that area, it's going to be a lot harder for you to fall for it because you have just in your life. And you have the grace to resist 
So you have to let go if you want to change. The more you condemn yourself, the more you fall back into that cycle of pornography, of fornication, of drugs, of lust. You'll continue to fall back and you'll never move on if you continue condemning yourself. Thinking God will never forgive you, let me just move on in my life the way I want to. God has great plans for you. He wants you to grow up. He wants you to study hard. He wants to bless you with an amazing spouse who will love you for who you are despite your past mistakes. And your life will become a testimony. Even people will look at you and be like, I cannot believe he actually used to be a womanizer. Can you imagine that? I can't believe it. Whenever Paul would testify of how he used to persecute Christians, he loved to see Christians die. I mean, he's like those terrorists out there who just bomb people just like that. That's how Apostle Paul was. Very zealous. I mean, if you would see a Christian, you'd be like, I wish I'd just kill him right now. He would imprison Christians with a man or You never cared. Even though you're beautiful, you did not care. As long as you're a Christian, he labeled you an enemy. But Jesus transformed his life and he became a completely different person. So if God could turn a persecutor of Christians into an apostle who wrote probably three quarters of the New Testament, what about you? You're condemning yourself. You're making yourself feel like um, there's no way God can forgive me. There's no way God can change me. I've messed up. God is like, Niagwe. only if you knew the plans I have for you. Oh, by now you'd even be back. I'm waiting for you. He's like the, <clears throat> you're like the prodigal son. The father of that prodigal son was at his house every day. He's checking outside. Has my son come back? That's how the father is to you. Jesus is looking out for you. He's like, where's my daughter? When is she coming back? Oh, when is she coming back? That's how Jesus is. God is just looking out for you. He's like, where's my child? Where's my child? And he's just waiting for you to run back home. And I promise, when the father of the prodigal son saw his son coming home, he ran even faster. He just left his house and ran to him and hugged him and kissed him on the cheek. I mean, he was so happy. And the prodigal son tried to condemn himself. Father, I'm not even, I don't even deserve your love. I don't even deserve to be your son. Let me be your servant. God is like, no. How dare you think that you deserve like, you deserve less. Of course, yes, you deserve less. But I'm willing to give you more. That's what grace does. Grace transforms you. And that's why you need to give in your whole heart to him. Because God has given you much more than you deserve. Yes, we all deserve hell. Even We all one time deserved hell. But now that we have Jesus Christ, we have the guarantee that we'll make it to heaven as long as we stay in God. That's the beauty of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I mean, it's just amazing. And uh, Abigail, do you have something to share? No, but I just want to um, give a short prayer um, as we conclude. Um, for all those who have been going through what Angie has been sharing um, from the beginning of the service, I just want us to um, have a short moment of prayer and then we'll give an opportunity to those who want to give their lives to Jesus. So let's please have ourselves and pray. Father, I want to thank you for this beautiful morning. Father, I want to thank you for this day, for the gift of life, for the love, the care and protection that you're placed upon our lives, Lord. Father, we know, Father, we're not deserving of your love. We're not deserving, Jesus, of your kindness and your mercies that you show us each and every morning, Lord. But, Father, I want to say thank you, Lord, for covering us, for protecting us. Father, preserving us for a time as this, Lord Jesus. Father, I want to say, uh, Father, as we come to you, we want to ask you for forgiveness for each and everything that we may have done that has brought glory to your name jesus for the words that we have said for the for the things that we have thought knowingly and unknowingly lord where we have sinned against you jesus when father we have gone against jesus your word and father we have decided further to go into the path of the world lord father wants to ask you for forgiveness jesus we have, we have looked upon ourselves as unworthy, as unloving, Jesus. But, Father, you come to us with open arms, and Jesus, you say that you love us, Lord. And, Father, we do not take that for granted, Jesus. Father, I want to say thank you, Jesus, for dying up for us, Father. It's not by our might, it's not by our own doings that, Jesus, you went on that cross, and, Father, you carried our sin. But, Father, it's only by your loving mercies and, Father, your kindness, Jesus, that we're able to live for a day like this, Jesus. Father, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, Father, for this day that you've given unto us, Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for dying for us, Lord, for, Father, being nailed upon that cross, for, Father, being spat on for you took the shame, you took all the 
weeps jesus just for me holy spirit of god father i want to say thank you lord jesus for the family and the friends that you've given unto us oh father for the platform that father has given unto us jesus to come and share the word of god lord and father i want to say thank you jesus for the hearts that you have touched for the mindset that you have changed after watching this service lord father we know that everyone who has been watching this service that father their lives have not been remain the same ever again jesus father i want to dedicate those who are living in insufficiency jesus those who are living in fear those who are living in doubt those who are living captive of the devil holy spirit of god father i want to thank you jesus that you have set them free and father you have provided jesus you have made a way where it seems to be nowhere jesus that father you have provided father you have made a way holy spirit of god thank you jesus oh father it's done and it has and it is finished in the mighty name of jesus i have prayed and i have believed amen, amen. and for those so want to give your life to Jesus Christ regardless of what you've been through probably at one point you're a Christian but you just ended up falling away I want to let you know it's not too late now is the time to return to God like the prodigal son returned to his father and the father celebrating him I mean as you the Bible talks about angels in heaven celebrating heaven celebrates every time a person returns to the Lord they celebrate. If no one's celebrating, if your friends don't celebrate, so what? You don't have to care about what they say. What matters most is that you're returning to the source of your life, the source of your blessing, the source of your peace, and most of all, to the source of the love that you need. So pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come before you right now. I come before you right now. And I repent. And I repent. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. I ask you. I ask you. To forgive me. To forgive me. Of every mistake. Every mistake. I have made. I have made. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Transform my life. Transform my life. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Deliver me. Deliver me. And take over me. And take over me. Lord, bring the right people in my life. Lord, bring the right people in my life. And remove every wrong person from me. And remove every wrong person from me. Because my heart, for my heart is after you. Is after you. Thank you. Thank you. For having mercy on me. For having mercy on me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. I mean, it is the best gift ever. You may not feel anything. Some of you probably just sensed peace. Like me, when I gave my life back to Jesus, I actually never did that. I never prayed that prayer in church. I was going through so much, I did not want to wait. I just went to the bedroom. I prayed. That simple prayer. And when I was praying, I started to cry. I literally sensed the presence of God. I cried, 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 and the peace of God just filled me. And yes, even though I went through challenges after that, because the devil hates to see this happen to anyone. It's, I mean, he hates it. But God helped me throughout the tough times, and now I'm fine. So I want to let you know that this is a journey. It's a process. You may not get it all perfect in one day, but allow yourself to go through the journey because it's part of your testimony. So go to a Bible-believing church. Ask God to help you, direct you, and look for someone who you can look up to, like a mentor, probably your father, your mother, or a pastor. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. You need a mentor in your life. You need to be discipled, just like um, Timothy needed to be discipled by Apostle Paul. You see, the great men of God we see in the Bible, uh, um, Apostle Paul also at one point needed to be discipled. If you read the book of Acts and Romans, well, people like Timothy, Titus, they were discipled. Timothy was specifically discipled by Apostle Paul and different other men of God in the Bible. So you need to be disciples. You need guidance. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that for, with the, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So you are safe when you have people by your side. But most of all, seek God on your own. Have a personal relationship with God. Study the word and pray. Even though you may not understand anything in the first place, over time it will make sense. So I hope you're all blessed. Be blessed. And if you have testimonies, you can put in the comment section. And we'll look out for you. And most of all, we'll be praying for you out there. So thank you for watching the program. And uh, may you have a happy Easter Sunday. Amen. Bye. Bye.
And Jesus is your redeemer. Is the way, the truth, and life. And once you do that, then everything kicks in. So from the very beginning, God's intention was to look for you, to bless you, to work for you. There is a component of God inside of you. And once he gives it grace, mercy, and power, you will explode on the outside. So Jesus had to come and die for mankind. He had to come and die. And when he came and died and paid the price, and he said, it's finished. He said, it's finished. But later on to find out, after he said, it's finished, he was still working. The story of resurrection is this. That he said, it is finished. But he said to Mary, don't touch me. I've not gone to the Father. So he went to heaven. According to Apostle Paul, he was sprinkling the blood, cleansing everything. Revelation chapter 5 tells us that he was still working to get the book from the hand of the one who was seated on the throne. Revelation chapter 5. Please go quickly, please. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Come on. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 4. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So God knew that through David, and David is a descendant of Jacob, of Isaac, and of Abraham. So God knew that this is how it's going to work out. God knew this is how it's going to work out. Child of God, you are not here by mistake. You are here to pick up an anointing so that God will cause the thing in you to explode outside and change the world. Raise your hand said, I'm glad I'm here. Verse 6. And I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts in the midst of the earth. I mean elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. So Jesus had already died. He had already died. They were playing a movie for John to realize what had happened. So I saw the Lamb of God as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now when Jesus was walking, how many of the people saw horns on his head? How many of you saw him with seven eyes? But yet he he breaks it down that these spirits of God on Jesus was as real as you could see a horn on a ram. Now let me tell everybody here the anointing of God upon your life is going to be so real that you don't have to explain it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The anointing of God is going to be so strong. You don't have to explain it. 
You see, when you are in heaven, things are real. It's when we are here that we don't see clearly. But from today, you're going to see clearly that that family is blessed, that God is with you, that God chose you, and God called you. Nobody saw Jesus had seven eyes. And yet when he was in the glory of God, the horns were visible and the eyes were real. John was with Jesus. He was born with him. He's a young kid brother of Jesus. In the family of Lazarus, I mean the family of Joseph. He never saw horns on him. But when he was in the presence of the glory, he said, hey, the man I've been with has seven eyes. God is about to open their eyes to see. I said, God is about to open their eyes. They are about to see that you are not normal. You are extraordinary. You, you start slapping, may the Lord start with you. They are looking at you as normal. But Jesus had seven eyes, seven horns, which is the spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So when Jesus was here, seven spirits of God was on him. Seven spirits of God was on him. That's why he could walk on water. That's why he could raise the dead. That's why he could do things. But for us here on earth, we never saw that. We saw a Nazarene. For us here on earth, we just saw a son of, jo of Joseph. But what kind of a man who said, peace be still, and the storm stops? What kind of a man calls a rotten man out of the grave and he come forth unless he has a spirit of God? What kind of a man multiplies bread and fish to feed multitudes. But because we are using earthly lenses, earthly broken lenses, we just see humans. When I look at you, I see those who have been called to lift the name of Jesus globally. Your generation is going to be blessed because of you. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it has been slain, having seven horns, which has the Spirit of God forth in the earth. Verse 7. And he, and, and he came, the lamb, took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them a harp and golden vows full of orders, which are the prayers of the saints. It's amazing. I'm praying, making my prayers, thinking they have gone straight. Yet the elders are withholding them. Look at the pastor that you see. Tell them, my friend, somebody's holding your prayer requests. These guys, they are close to the throne. Every prayer that is made, they bottle it up. They bottle it up. Oh, this is for another day. <laughs> but I just want you to see this. All the saints would make prayers. These guys were just capturing them. Which one? 
Because there was a document which was written contrary to us. Jesus came and took it out of the way. Verse 9. Verse 9. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God. They also needed These guys were so close with our prayers. But yet they, have never, they had never gotten right there. Document. There was a document that says the presence of the saints or no matter who they are, let them not come close here. There was a book, the one seated on the throne was holding on to it. Say, whoever takes it out of my hand, whoever takes it out of my hand, is the one who brings bring the prayers of the saints. We will never know what Jesus did for us. Our prayers would go up, but they were stopping at the level of elders. You would fast and pray for 40 days, knowing that God has had you, yet your prayers stop at the veranda. Jesus had to come and take out of the way that document that was against us. Give him praise and honor that are due to him. Child of God, cannot clap like that for someone who helped you. And the surprising thing, these guys are really close to God, but they are not redeemed. And they sang a new song. These guys were singing an old song. When Jesus died, they were able to sing a new song. You have redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests because it's the king that decrees. It is the priest that releases. These guys were there. They had no rank. They had no office. Yes, we are you, Musai. They became kings. They started decreeing. They became priests. They started releasing. Raise your hands. Declare what you want. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Now release it. We need to come to you. And we shall reign on earth. What? What? These guys had to rain on earth. But they had run away from God. They had hid themselves. Brethren, we will no longer hide ourselves. You are going to build a high rise in your village. You are going to start what nobody ever started in your home. If you want to take it in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, we have hidden ourselves for long. I'm going to build a structure. A Even the witch will know that I showed up. We have hidden ourselves for long. Verse 11. Verse 11. 
And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That is 100 trillion. We've already gone through that month. Many were bound more than the population. For us, we are 8 billion. But you could see child of God. That was a problem. That was a problem. Until Jesus shed the blood. But he had to go in heaven. And remove the book. Everything that was contrary against us. So when he said it's finished. He was saying it prophetically. He was saying it is finished. In that area, I'll just have to go and get the book and open the gate so that 100 trillion of angels, of elders, of people from every nation, from every tongue, that means even if you pray in Japan, God hears you as one praying in Hebrew. Nobody raise your hands clap for Jesus. In every language, you will be hard. So that's why Jesus has to rise again. Because, listen, he had to be born as a man. Otherwise, he will be he will be disqualified from being our savior. Because the requirement was that a man must be able to undo this. He must be a seed of a woman. That's why they told him there's no man in heaven on earth who has been able to do it. The righteousness of Elijah, of Moses, of all the people, of Enoch and others, could not do it. So Jesus had to humble himself, leave his throne, leave his wealth, and come down like a man, so that he does it for us. That's a penalty against a devil. He never knew where it came from. He just saw the ball in the net. Brethren, God is going to work for you. By the time the devil wakes up, the miracle in your life, he will not know where it passed. Amen. So he had to become a man. And he had to die. Remember, God does not die. But he had to die. So he had to release that spirit. That's why he said, Father, into your hand, I commit my spirit. He had to release that. He was not going to die. They would have beat him all over. They would have crucified a nail. They would even have cut off his legs. While they are cutting off, it would grow up. He had seven spirits of God. They thought they were cutting his legs. By the time they realized, he would be having new legs. You didn't hear what I said. What they were dealing with, they didn't know what you were dealing with. Tell your neighbor what you are dealing with in me. You don't know nothing about it. Whenever you press me, I get more powerful. Whenever you do this, I become more anointed. What are you dealing with? You don't know nothing about it. They brought cancer in the they have a minister. You don't know what you're dealing with. You didn't hear me. Whatever you've gone through, it's going to produce another level. Amen. Therefore, 
he had to die by releasing his spirit. And then he picked up his body. Because that's what he said. I'm going to pick up my body. So the spirit came and picked up the body of Jesus. And threw it in the garden. <laughs> then he said, Mary, don't touch me. And sweet. he went to pick the book. Amen. So that we are kings and priests. So from today, I decree and declare, you're going to live like a king. You're going to behave like a priest. In Jesus' name, he has redeemed us. He has redeemed us. That's why, while he was in heaven, he told the Father, send them the fivefold ministry. One of the things you must understand, that every level you are at will deal with the anointing tomorrow. Every level you are at, God sends you something the world has never seen. Because while he was here, his men were known as disciples. When he left, they became apostles. <laughs> people of God you've been at your level there is another level coming somebody clap your hands to Jesus there is another level coming that's why every day me I believe the word God has said about this church that the most richest believers in this country are going to be members of this church. And this year, you are becoming a billionaire. Amen. If you got it, clap your hands for God. So lift up your hand. We used to sing that song. Mm. Azukira mubafu ngaba wa gudava la bebe yava mu magombengo muwa nguzi abere mola mwe mirembe jona yevale yevale. to sing it from the point of revelation. Not the point of knowledge. But the point of revelation. We, we, used to have, uh, we used to have a song up there in Chibao. It said, Look at the man helped me. He helped and delivered me. I wanted to sing from the point of revelation that he, that he helped you in his death and in his resurrection. The man helped me. You know that song? Hey! Oh, I'm such a Hey, hey, hey. 
you, you, you have to have you have to have this personal revelation why did he come? Why did he die? Why did he rose from the dead? Why did he go to heaven? And why is he trying to live in me? Because I was his desire from the very beginning. And he has loved me with an everlasting love. And that's why he's releasing everything. In fact, his, his, his desire is that he has a personal relationship with you. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hand to the Lord. He did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you came Health in frail humanity. humanity. He did not wait for me to draw near to you, but you came to hear your voice. Calling me, I'm forever grateful to you. I'm forever grateful for the cross. I'm for give me harmony, please. Lay behind the storm. You leave to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You to the fall. Thought of me above all, crucified, lay. You leave to die, rejected and alone, like a rose. your hands and tell him things. Tell him, tell him, Lord, you did it for me. Now I know why. There is a value in me. There is a, a, a treasure in me that you are looking for. A worshiper. A believer. A lover your image he 
Here I am, Lord. Have your way. This morning, Lord, I know you did it for me. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. You live to die, rejected and the Lord, like a rose trampled on the ground. You too. Seated. So if God had a plan and he had a mission and he wanted you to reveal his glory and his image so the question will be how will I do it? Where to do it? And when? How? Where and when. If he's targeting all the power he has, if he's targeting all the wisdom he has, in fact, when you look at what Jesus achieved by just removing the book, by dying on the cross, in Revelation chapter 5, the Bible says, power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessing. If he got all this to throw at you, then who are you? Who are you? Isn't it time we stop listening to what we hear and concentrate from what he says? On Good Friday, I read to the people scripture that Jesus reached a place called Golgotha known as the place of the skull. And that's where he was crucified. The skull is the home of our eyes, which is vision. Home of our thinking, which is our brain. Home of our speech, which is our faith, which is our confession, our salvation. Home of our ears, which is our Faith comes by hearing. Home of our tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And that's where he was crucified. Literally, Jesus was crucified here. Because here is where the problem is. If your brain is incapacitated, you are in a coma. You will think you are alive, but you are on machine support. When you are blind, you are no longer leading, you are led. When you have no smell, you don't know where you are. When you have no ears, you can't hear. When you can't speak, you cannot authoritate. And Jesus died here at the place of the skull. So who we are? Who, who are we? What are we? And where are we? Saints, it's not just 
to wash away your sins. But that is true. It's bigger than that. Let me finish with this because we have to go. Yesterday I got a, a video. And we have a barometer. I hope they, they send it to the people. I send it to him. Did he give it to them? We put a barometer. We've been measuring the rain that is coming to Karamojo. Since we went there. So we, we, we do that work. Because I said I wanted to see. Since we went to Karamojo. How heavy rain has come. There has to be a difference. So we went to 6 millimeter. We went to 7 millimeter. That was the highest. Saints, yesterday we were surprised. I sent him the video. Yesterday, the rain that came down there's another video as well. Our barometer measured 12 millimeter inch. Thank you for your love and No heavy rain has ever been registered to that level in Karamoja. This is not man-made. This has to be the anointing of the Holy Ghost. This has to be God. In fact, we are we are now working hard to be able to, to, to shelter our equipment. We need finances to build the things there so that that is Karamoja. Where they told us was a desert. You know, when, when, when you obey God and you go by faith, God will do what you cannot do to prove to everybody that he called you. So all of you who are called of God, you have your knowing. Don't miss tomorrow night. Don't miss tomorrow night. Twelve millimeter rain. <laughs> you have no idea how much rain it is. We were just starting planting in the dry season. You know? If you see what we were planting, the dust was actually coming up. We were planting and you could see the dust. And I wish I had all the seeds in the ground right now. Because now there will be, in two weeks, they will be up. But now the rain has come. We have to fight the weed. You see, sometimes God can tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this and then you procrastinate. Now you have another issue to deal. Because the weed, the seed of the weed is already in the ground. So for it, it's going to germinate before our seed comes up. Now we are back at square one. But if we had planted all the 3,000 acres, we will be the one dancing. But the weed is going to dance. You see, saints, when and how and where do we become gods? Because the Bible says you are gods. You are sons of the Most High. When do you gonna become that billionaire? When are you gonna become that? First of all, you need to believe God, and faith without action is dead. So, saints, tomorrow, I told our team the only day you have is today, day off. Tomorrow, we are rushing you more seeds we, because we've been overtaken. We've been overtaken now. We're going to have a problem with the weed. Weeds. Because God gave them power to live. Let's 
So we're going to need a miracle. A serious miracle. To rush the seats there quickly. I told the company that has it to open for us tomorrow so that we get those seats. And we plant in two weeks. We need to plan from 5 in the morning to 7 in the evening. Non-stop. All tractors. We have three planters and we have a, we, we have a broadcaster. We need to hit the ground. And we need miracles. So I'm going to wait upon you. But it's a miracle. Karamoja has... has <laughs> God, you are so good. 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 I bless your name. Holy Spirit, move this morning. Speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name. There are those who believed God to help us with a fertilizer seed. There are those who are planting seeds today for Karamoja. But you know, if we get some people giving 50,000 shillings today, 100,000 shillings today, 1 million shillings today, 5 million shillings today, you, you, the number is on the screen. Uh, we, the Lord called us to do this. You've seen how many people we are feeding, distributing food, how many communities. It's a wonder. It's making people know that they are God's people on earth. Every time we stop death, God is glorified. Whether you have 20,000 or 10,000, it will be wonderful if I get at least 300 people giving 100,000 that will enable me to buy all the seeds I need. Because I need between 30 and 50 million this morning in Jesus name lift your hand because that money goes into fuel as well just laugh come on just laugh so in the next five minutes, let me see those who can give a hundred thousand shillings. The number is on the screen. Those of you watching by television, in Jesus' name, come and stand over here. You can plant a seed of one hundred thousand. Thank you, Morris. Council Morris. Thank you. God is going to do great things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, for us, we can eat Christmas anytime. I told my family, anytime we can eat Christmas, Easter, anytime. But those people, they miss this season. They may starve for a long time. This is going to be a food for a whole year. So if you've got your seed, whether it was for uh, fertilizer, whether it was for whatever seed you brought for, for them uh, today, just bring it. Whether it was for your tithe and offerings and you came late and you have it with you, just bring it to the Lord. Thank you, baby. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can give a hundred thousand. Jesus' name. You can give fifty thousand this morning. Come. Give to the Lord. When we add our seeds together, a miracle will be created. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' name. You have your 20,000. Also come. Let's plant a seed for Karamoja. That will make a big, a big difference. We love you, Lord. Mm, I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me all my days. 
You have your 10,000. Oli no mutwalo go. Your 5,000. Oli nkumizo 5. Come on, come up, come up, come up. Jangu maso. For the moment I wake up till I lay my head I will see of the goodness of God, lift your hand, lift your seat. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. You are speaking to your people. You are causing them to be the head and on the tail. You are prospering us. You are blessing us. Lord, thank you. You are good. And your mercy endures forever. The seeds, let them bear fruit. We are on our way to be billionaires. There will be a time when one person will give all the money. I believe it. I see it. It is upon them. So I call upon the anointing to descend upon them by the grace of God, by the power of God, by the Spirit of God. Yesterday to done forever you are the same. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just laugh and plant your seed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. through the fire in the darkest, darkest night you are close than no other you are my father you are my friend I will see of the goodness of God Stand up on your feet, everybody. All oh, my life you have been faithful. Give you praise, Jesus. All oh, my life you have been so, so. If you have never given your love to Jesus, please just come and stand over here. Jesus loves you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Have a blessed day.
Easter. Don't miss tomorrow. At five. Bring the sick. Bring whatever, whatever you believe in God for. The Lord will anoint us. Bless us. And cause us to be the head and on the tail. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Amen. With every If you're joining us for this second service, kindly move forward. Just draw near, just draw near in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. On behalf of our pastors, Robert and Jessica Kayanja, we want to welcome you to our second service. If you're just joining us online, you are also very much welcome. If you're walking in, kindly move forward. Now, kindly just take a minute and welcome somebody. Move around and welcome somebody. In the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome somebody in the house of the Lord. Welcome somebody in the house of the Lord. Welcome somebody in the house of the Lord. Just welcome somebody in the house of the Lord. Someone and say, It's so good to see you. It's so good to be here in the presence of the Lord. I'm so glad He called me. It's so to be here it's so good to be here of the Lord I'm so glad my God called me it's so to be here. All right, let's go. Walk around and tell somebody it's so good to see you. You're welcome in the presence of the Lord. Hey, all right, let's go. It's so good. It's so good to be here in the presence. 
Take your seats, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, this is the day the Lord has made. Kindly take your seats, hallelujah. Happy Easter as we welcome the rivers of life choir, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Yes, Yes, Montana, Tarimo, yes, Ukirata. Yes, Montana, Tarimo, Katine Wogan, Jere. Yes, Montana, Tarimo, Mula Mutafanga. Maria Muyakela, Munoye, Gali Mukukaba, 
kugambie ya sange chinja yao malaika nga tutekuli wangu kola chinkubuza yesu gono nyatalimu genda mangwelio bagambe nti ya zuki deda yesu muntanda talimu katine bogenda jerele Yesu muntana talimu ye yazuki rata Yesu muntana talimu katine bogenda jerele Yesu muntana talimu mula mutafanga Batire jinja babyabo ne baliteka kuli ku Yesu Gabera bidde bonti Yesu enanyini jinja Jinja yange chimba musa eri musingo yo amanyi e jinja kuntana cheche chonga Yesu ye jinja Yesu muntana talimu kati ne bogenda jerele Yesu muntana talimu ye Yesu kirata Yesu muntana talimu kati ne bogenda jerele Yesu muntana talimu mula mutafanga Yesu kirawa chitufu mazima leto masi yakakasa na iso mukono mubiba tune mumbiri sizera paula gamba ya mulaba yokana gamba ya mulaba sitefana gamba ya mulaba ku mukono wadyo yesu muntana talimu kati ne bogenda jerele yesu muntana talimu ye yazuki rata yesu muntana talimu kati ne bogenda jerele yesu muntana talimu mula mutafanga yesu muntana talimu kati ne bogenda jerele Yesu muntana talimu ye yazuki rata Yesu muntana talimu kati ne bogenda jerele Yesu muntana talimu mula mutafanga 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 Namugamba titotia nate Yesu azukide Agenze heye galida yangabwe ya yogida Heyo jemuna musanga wena wasivule Ha, hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Yesu ya sidi Yesu Yesu Kila Mariamu ya tuka Na buli na bande Na boba kende balabe Yesu wazukite 
Zukira mongere ngale zamani Gama gombe ya gawangula mongere ngale zamani We have a reason to celebrate Jesus And today we just want to make a statement that he is risen Somebody say he is risen He did it just for you and me Amen Enjoy this one, DFN Let's 
Aleluya. Aleluya. Yes, he is alive. Amen.
sing this song together. Kindly put for us the lyrics. Hallelujah. Yet not I, but through Christ. Hallelujah. Put for everyone the lyrics to see it. Sing along with us. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and worship Him. Yes, we are was. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A tender Muguano Lualero. A guano, a guano could sing the old Lualero. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> 
worship you, God. Here I am. Oh, here I am. To honor you, oh. Lord, here I am. go ahead and adore him what a beautiful name his name is what a beautiful name is the name of Jesus hallelujah you are the word of the beginning one with God the Lord most high you hear now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ What a beautiful name it is Nothing what a beautiful name it is, the name. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name, what a beautiful name. the name of Jesus.
was finished ha. you were buried in the ground ha. but the grave could not contain you ha. for you were the victor's crown at the cross the work was finished ha. you were buried in the ground hey but the grave could not contain you
is alive. Ha! And because he lives, I live. Ha. Hallelujah, Jesus lives. Oh, and my future is alive in him. I overcame. Hallelujah. He's won my victory. Ah. Hallelujah.
she call him on No Monsoni as it can be Wafuka Sadaka Ayamponya Ovulamo Vovono Savo causes Church lifted up Kulwanke No Sing it louder. Oh, cool one. No Just lift up your hands, lift your hands to the Lord, is worthy of praise, is worthy. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of praise. We give you praise and glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise. We give you praise. You died for us, Lord. You died for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Greet the person next to you. Tell them he's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. The Master is alive. The Lord of Lords is alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Greet like somebody who is alive. I remember when Jesus rose from the dead. Those who remained dead told the others, hey, He is alive for sure. He has been here for three days. He has left us behind. They stayed in that death. Jesus remained alive. If you are saying Jesus is alive, say it with life. Rise up on your feet and tell them he's alive. Hey, he's alive. He's alive. Take two minutes. Everybody see. He's alive. And He's alive. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. You look so beautiful today. In honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. You may be, you may be seated.
And um, today is a day of thanksgiving. So we come to thank him for what he has done for us. His goodness, his mercy, his love, his power, and whatever he continues to do for us. When you look at what Jesus went through and the whole plan of redemption, of salvation, and all was done because of you. All was done so that you become the beneficiary. We thank him. We cannot thank him enough. We can't praise him enough. We can't even glorify him enough. Because what he did, even if you get all the 8 billion people on planet earth, and you get all their wealth, you get all their houses, you get all their gold and diamonds, and you pay it as a ransom, they are not even a dot of what Jesus did. Because he didn't only just die for us or pay for our sins, but he turned our bodies into the temple of the Holy Spirit. He made us sons and daughters of God. We are joint heir with him. He deserves a better hand clap. So as I told you and shared with you, that this morning, we are coming to thank God. We'll turn our tithe and offerings into thanksgiving offerings. We'll turn our seeds into thanksgiving offerings. We are going to thank God for what he has done, who he is, and what he will ever do. In Jesus' mighty name. So everybody get a hold of your thanksgiving in your hand. Some of us did ours in the first service. So let's, uh, let's get your offering. Your family. Thank him for your family. As a church here, the Lord keeps on encouraging us on levels we never known before. If you doubt the anointing in this place, we see it in our children. We see it in our elderly. We see it in our in everything we do. We see it in our wives, in our husbands. We see it in our projects. We see it in everything we do. Child of God, we have a reason to thank God. When we went to Karamoja, child of God, I'll talk about it towards the end of the service. Because the first thing we did was to buy a barometer and other equipment to tell us the, 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 the rainfall. Because you're going to go agriculture, you must know how much okay. rain you have. And uh, the highest we have ever had was 7 millimeters. So we've been taking tests, records, and, 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 and seeing whether whether the rain is good for agriculture. Because everybody said Karamoja is a desert. Child of God, yesterday, it rained. And we measured 12 millimeters of rain. 12 millimeters of rain. Oh, you better clap your hands to Jesus. Karamoja is no longer a desert. Because you can't get that heavy rains unless you are around the Victoria Benson. And it surprised us. Because we were not yet red. Our seeds are not yet in the ground. We need more seeds in the ground. We need more seeds in the ground. In the ground. I wish we had done that. That rain you see was yesterday in Karamoja. The anointing turns the desert into a pool of water. In fact, there's a scripture. Look it for me, please put it up there. He said, I will turn the desert into a pool of water. Those are the promises. We thank God because everywhere we have gone, his spirit has been with us. You better clap your hands better than that you are doing. I know you have money in your hands. I know you have money in your hand. But it's, it's, it's I'll turn the, 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 the desert into a pool of water. 
child of God Isaiah 41.18 he said and I will open rivers in high places fountains in the midst of the valley I will make the wilderness or a desert a pool of water and the dry land springs of water literally in everything we do and what you are about to do you are about to see scriptures coming to pass in your life as it used to be in the Bible days. And start with you was clap your hands and in your household. You know, I want to be where God's word is fulfilled. Last week, we saw it. You know, when God said I opened the doors, I was talking to the family of uh, Honorable Nyamutoro. They were here in the first service. And uh, about beginning of the month, beginning of the year, beginning of the year or end of the last year, they came to see me in the office. And he was telling me certain things. And he said, well, I've been working. I've been doing this. And I wish I could uh, share my visions to somebody very important. Maybe it could help. And I said, let's pray. This is the year of the open gate. I think it was January. It was in January. They, they will be here to testify next Sunday as a family and everybody. And, 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 and so I, I said, I, I think this is, God will open again. Little did we know. So he was telling me. He, said, Pastor, he told the, the whole church. He said, we were at State House. He said, I was asked questions. I never thought nobody would ever ask me. What do I do? What is my education level? Uh, he said, many, many other things the president was asking him. He said, I never thought I would go to State House at that level. I went there because my daughter was swearing in. And the Lord reminded me to say, this is the year of the open gate. And nobody will stop you going where you are supposed to go. Come on, somebody. <laughs> What was the one Kachi? They are open gates. You're not going to have to push them to open them. They will open them for you and you will just go right through. So therefore, we thank God. He has raised so many people in the members of this church. Young people who grew up here. Boys and girls now, they're young men. And, I mean, they're young, young adults. Some of them are member of parliament. Some of them are in uh, 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 judges, uh, magistrates. They are seated over here. That's what happens to Miracle Center. The anointing raises people. Lift up your hand and praise the name of the Lord. That's what the Lord does. And we are grateful. So this morning, we are coming to thank God. It's going to take us at least a few minutes. We'll come section by section. But I want you to come and bring your offering here on the altar. And uh, we honor God. So get a hold of your offering in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Lift it up before the Lord. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Everybody repeat these words with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus. I am here today believing you for a great miracle. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for anointing me. Thank you for keeping me. You saved me. You washed me. You cleansed me. You've given me life. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my country. Thank you for what I do. Thank you for the blessing Thank you for the increase. Thank you, dear Lord. I will ever be grateful because of who you are. In Jesus' name, I'm here to say thank you for the blood. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you. I am born again. I'm your temple. I praise your name. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for health. Thank 
thank you for wisdom in Jesus mighty name amen and amen the number is on the screen and God will bless you mightly towards the end of the service we have a, a photo booth we put it there for you uh, we put it inside because it was uh, it was raining but after the service, I think we're going to put it outside on the steps there so you can go. It, it kind of looks like uh, this one so that you can go and be able to or they, they put the money for those of you using for uh, digital giving remove the digital giving it looks like this so you will be able to go where it is and take some pictures and send them to your friends from Miracle Center with love. In Jesus' name. The stage looks so beautiful. My daughter-in-law and, and her daddy decorated this place. It looks so beautiful. In Jesus' mighty name. We are and I looked at our choir. They look so stunning. Thank you. Thank you thank so much. You. In Jesus' name. So let's go ahead and, uh, and give. In Jesus' name. You come. Let's start with this section here. All of you just come and fill up here. And let's do that quickly, please. You just, just put on your offering on the on here. Let's start with this section. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the thief. You have done with your blood. You have saved me with your power. You have raised me to God. Be the glory for the sea. Have done to God. Tell him, tell him, saints. Be the Let's have this section here also. Let's have this section coming here. Please come one way and go the other way. Come this way and you go that way. It will be easy. To God be the glory. blood you have saved me with your power you have raised me to God be the glory for the To God be the glory. That section, that section over there. Section in the what that hope? To God be the glory for the things you. If you come this way and then they go that way, it will be better. Heaven and earth. Now go back that way, please. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we 
we give you praise, Jesus. What a mighty God. Angels. Heaven and earth. What a mighty God. This section here, what a section This section where the cameras are. Section over there, please. Section here, anyone Angels of heaven and earth. What a mighty. Oh, what a mighty God. That section, that triangle section over there. Section here, yeah, we got triangle. Coming through, coming through, coming through. What a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. If you can go back through here, that will be easy. What a, what a mighty God. We praise you, Lord. Angels. Heaven and earth. What a mighty God is alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Section here. Section here. Amen. Mama He's alive. Oh, you are finished. Mama this one here. Section here. Amen. He's alive. Amen. Jesus. From Tororo.
Somebody clap your hands to Jesus is worthy of praise. Amen. Pastor Jessica, come and say hello to, to the people on this. I know time is gone, but uh, we promise to get you out of here so that they will not eat the food from you as quick as possible. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Yes, we have as Happy Easter Miracle Center Cathedral. Happy Easter Miracle Center Cathedral. Happy Easter. To Bagariza Easter Nunji. The Lord is risen. He is no longer in the grave. Even death no kufa. could not hold him captive. And <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in this time. May the power of resurrection resurrect everything that you had given up on, everything that you had forgotten, everything that you had buried. Where is victory over death? It is by the Spirit of God. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead is in all of us. May he resurrect your marriage. May he resurrect your business. May he resurrect your relationship. Because he's the resurrection and the life. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Well, um, tomorrow at five, we're going to have a healing service and an anointing service. It's important that you come. The resurrection power is amazing. We saw a girl who was brought here on the 1st of March. I've never seen an illness like this in my life. I've seen many skin diseases. I've seen leprosy. Not only in this country, healed by the power of God, but I've never seen anything like that. Literally, someone dripping past. She was not even wearing clothes. Many of you are watching on, on, on the overnight. You saw her. After you left. I, I never. She was blinded. No, no, no. Put back the other picture. The other picture, please. The other picture when she first came. That's what I want. Put it on a big TV. The other one is, is what I want. When her tears were passed. No, you're not getting what I'm saying. Her tears that came out of her eyes, her blind eyes, was passed. The whole body was rotten. She could not walk. She had been, she had gone to work. And she was so sick, they bandaged her as though she was a mummy. I never seen a miserable case in my life. I, I've, and, and, I, and I've seen miserable cases, but I've never seen anything like this. She was brought here blind. You see all the bandages, blood is coming out of her skin. And what surprised me that as she began to shed tears, pass was coming out. 
There is a, 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 a video that you can see very closely. This they don't know how to put things. They, the, all the camera people, they film whatever they... All that you see dripping down, that thing, is not that she had put on makeup. Because she was no longer wearing makeup. That was pass. Blind. She came here. The power of resurrection touched her. And she They were putting a, a, they were just putting a lesu on her. There have been to all doctors abroad and down and nothing. Last Friday, Friday where they? she came. There she is. Standing there. She has got a new skin. Like a baby skin. She can see. Somebody shout hallelujah to God be the glory. In less than a month. In less than... There is a God in this place that knows and hears the hearts of men. People of God. What can we render to the Lord? When all hope is gone, only Jesus. Only Jesus. So I don't want to go through this resurrection weekend without you being touched by the power of God. Jesus did not rise from the dead for nothing. You know, there's a story about when he rose from the dead. He met people at Emmaus. He met people in the tomb. He met people in the evening. And I don't understand why those who saw him in the morning did not go and mobilize the whole city. I don't know why. They saw him in the morning. They saw him in the evening and they felt to go to mobilize people so that he can touch them. You know, there's always that laxity that we put in. I know today is a day for, with the families and, and that, but tomorrow, tomorrow, in the evening at five, it'll be a three-hour service. Come and be part of the resurrection service. God is going to resurrect your vision, your money, your business, your family. Oh, somebody clap your hands to Jesus if you're, if you're hungry for God. So let's be here in the presence of God. We will see what we have never seen before. Because our God is a miracle God. He is a wonderful God. He is a God of love. He is a God of power. He is a mighty God. And he will touch your life. The question still remains. Why this kind of love? Why come down as a baby? Why live through hands of humans? Why do what you did? And yet they did all this to you. The question still remains. And he promises to come back. On this earth. Where they beat you and crucify you and kill you. Why? Why? You can only begin to answer these questions when you look in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 tries to give you a glimpse of why God will give his only begotten son. He said in the beginning God created the heaven and earth but the earth was void. And formless. And darkness covered the heart. And God said there be light. He did all he did. In fact, when you go back to the verse, we're going to go verse, verse 4 quickly, please. And he said there was light. Verse 5. 
And God called the light day and the darkness he called the night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. So God determines your first day based on the darkness or on the light. He begins with the evening and ends with the morning. Verse 6. Because of time, I'm not going to that. So much for another day. Verse 6, please. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. The purposes of rivers and lakes and everything is because God said, One part be strong, one part have rocks and be soil. Shout of God, and He divides. So now we have rivers, lakes, and oceans. Because of his word. Because of his word. He created land. Because of his word. He's going to give you land. Because of his word. He said to Abraham, I'll give you land. And he gave him land. Let me say it again. This year 2024, God is going to give you land. Some of the land is going to give you is not only in Uganda, in other countries. Your salary will not give you land. Land in Uganda is very expensive. But I'm here to tell you, we have a God who gives land. If you want it, take it in Jesus' name. Verse 7. Verse 7. And God made the firmament to find the waters which were under the waters from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Verse 8. And God called and God called the firmament heaven. And God called firmament heaven. There is a deeper revelation about that. Because there was a firmament on the earth, a firmament above. So heaven is not just <laughs> Heaven is not just a location. Heaven is a presence. Where he is, heaven is. Do you believe that God is in you? God is in you. So he's going to give you Wherever you stay, there's going to be a little heaven. You, you, we'll, we'll talk about that one next time. Verse 9. Verse 9. And God said, let there be waters under the heavens to gather together into the place and let the dry land appear. 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 And it was so. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. Child of God, right now, when they bring all the land titles in Uganda, there's none in your name. For those of you who have no land. But this year, let a land title appear in your name according to the word of God. Amen. Verse 10. And God called the dry land earth and he gathered together of the waters called the seas and he saw that it was good. 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. The herb yielding seed. The herb yielding seed. And the fruit tree yielding fruit. Think about this. God first created a watermelon before I created me. And God first made fene before he made you. No, it's the other way around. He made those things in anticipation of the man he was about to create. He organized the whole earth. He organized the planet because his image was about to appear. God went through all this in anticipation for you. So who are you? Ask the person next to you, who am I? Who am I? 
When you look at what God went through in order to wait for you start treating yourself much more better than what you are treat, how you are treating yourself today. Start seeing yourself in a better image than what you are seeing today. Because he will not put you in a mess. The earth was void. He could not put you in those circumstances. He had to rearrange. He had to plant. He had to plant fruit. He had to plant herbs. He had to plant mountains. He had to create the waters. He had to create the heavens so that you may have a state entrance into his creation. Which means you are more important than what your neighbor is telling you to be. Lift your hand and say, Lord, help me understand who am I and why am I here? Verse 12. And you know, he's amazing. He said, and he called the earth. He called. The the earth. You know, get this. There is a calling of God, a call of God upon your life. And that's what God is calling. Many are chosen, few, many are called, few are chosen. All of us are called. Doesn't matter whether you are preaching or running or, 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 or throwing discus or, or javelin or whatever it is or playing football or you are you, 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 you a journalist. There is a call of God upon your life. And that call of God, God is going to give it everything it needs. He's going to empower you with every blessing and it will come to pass. That's what he does. He calls things. He calls the things which are, are not as though they are. God uses the power of your calling. That's why he's going to give you everything you need. That's why he said he called Abraham. Everybody he calls. Lift your hand and said, I'm called. He said, and the earth brought forth grass. And a hub. Hub is where we get the word habo. It's medicinal. And then the medicine. Yielding seed. Not seeds. We all, we all know there are seeds on this earth. There is a seed of beans. Wheat. There are seeds. But this is a particular seed. He's talking about. And it's coming out of ability to heal. Okay, it's coming from a hub. No grass. Grass is there. Not every grass is a hub. But this hub has the ability to produce a seed. You know when God spoke to Abraham, I'll give you this land and your seed. Which seed was he talking about? Which seed was he talking about? It was the Isaac, not Ismael. They are both seeds. But one is the seed that carries the DNA that can't be stopped, that can't be prevailed over, that can't be coached, or scorched, or destroyed. Here he's talking about a seed yielding from a herb. A herb, not many herbs, and a herb. So Jesus in, in Malachi chapter 3, uh, chapter 4 or chapter 3, chapter 4, he said, and, uh, and, and, and the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his hands. Jesus was known as the balm of, he of Gilead. So he was saying, in this medicinal line, I'm going to provide a seed. Now, what is medicine? In the spiritual world, medicine is not only what we swallow. Because that girl had no medicine for her healing. It is spiritual medicine. These are the components that makes up a spiritual medicine. 
Righteousness. Peace. Joy. In the Holy Ghost. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Holiness. Prayer. Fasting. All brings up a hub for healing. The Bible talks about the healing of a nation. How do you heal a nation? You bring it back to repentance. You bring it back to revival. You bring it back to life. So he's talking about a hub here. And that hub he was talking about, he reveals it in chapter 3 when Adam sinned and he said the seed of a woman he said there is a hub there's going to be a chosen people people who are called specifically for the purpose of revival for the purpose of the move of God for the purpose of holiness and righteousness they will be able to produce a seed that will crush the devil's head so God set it up in Genesis at the beginning in chapter 1. So everything you see now is just going to play out. You've heard the scripture which says God will never do anything unless he reveals to his servants. Child of God, God does not do things after he reveals them. God do things then he reveals them. You didn't hear I just said. God do things then he reveals it. For us as prophets, for us as preachers, we are only telling you what he had already provided for. Your salvation is provided for. Your miracle provided for. Your, your apartment in heaven is provided for. Your next billion shilling is provided for. By his stripes, we were not we are we were healed your healing was purchased long before miracle center was may God do it for you all who are standing we declare what was pre-planned for you you are pre-planned for you. your car, your house, your husband, your wealth. You are pre-planned for you. Not yet 22,000 years ago. No, I'm just 62 years old. But what I'm preaching to you was done 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. So I'm just declaring. I'm reminding you. Why are you impacting me? Your money is already in the kingdom. Somebody has not gotten it. Yet. I came to declare to you today. There is a land title in Uganda for you. I came to declare to you. This is the year God is opening the open gates. You are going to go to the nation. You are going to go to the nation. You have money. God is giving you victory in all the battles you got. Tell the person next to you. Hear what is being told you. Shout unto them. Listen to what is being told you. What is being told you? Happened long time ago. They belong to you. Come possess them in the name of Jesus. 2,000 years ago, Jesus purchased a land for you in yes. heaven. His, when you got saved, that's when your construction began. It is yours delayed. It is yours delayed yourself. Some of the houses are already constructed. They are building the third house. I don't know who I'm talking to.
The seed of the woman will crush the devil's head. God is revealing it more and more from a hub. Roots of healing. That's why Jesus is known as a root of devil. So when Adam and Eve had problems, Adam why did God go through all that? Because God had wanted man to be like one of them. He made man in his image. In the likeness of God. He made him. And the problem was, and that was Adam's problem. He wanted to be like God. And the devil said, just eat and become. Just eat. Remember Adam was created grown up. So he didn't have to go through crying. He didn't have to go through stealing bread. Or lying. About exam examination and age. Adam did not have to go through Adam, hassles and bustles. He didn't have to go through what we go through. He didn't have to lie. That's why when God asked him what happened, he told him everything. But if it was you, you would have lied two books. Because you started lying when you were five. Adam did not go through what he went through. He didn't pay dowry to get a wife. He didn't do introduction. He never visited anybody. He did not fundraise. <laughs> so he didn't go through what he went through and so he thought to become a son of God you are going to just eat a fruit but a fruit has roots in this fruit he wanted to eat had the root of good and evil. And Adam had not tested evil. Adam and he became good. He was just innocent. Let me ask a question. If you grew up in a palace where you don't have to struggle for nothing. The teacher meets you at home. They bring the lab at home. You don't have to go nowhere. They wake you up for breakfast. They remind you to eat dinner. They come to measure your clothes. You don't even know what a passport is. You don't know what money is. You don't know how to sweat. So you're just typically a good person. You have not fought with anybody or argued with anybody. Will that qualify you to go to heaven? Let me bring it to church. You live in church since day one. You, all you hear is music, reading of scriptures, and then you go and you eat and you come back. And you have nobody to fight. Even the demons don't come near you. Will that qualify you to go to heaven? No. That was Adam. Adam, 
And yet God wanted man to be like him. That's why when Adam sinned and fell in chapter 3, God said, now man has become like one of us. He wasn't talking about after Adam had sinned. Sometimes when God's not all that, not sometimes, but all the time, but she say, when God speaks, because there's no time and space, when he speaks, he covers the past, the present, and the future in one word. When God speaks, he covers the past, the present, and the future. That's why when he said, you're going to be a billionaire, it means your debts are going to be paid, your current situation is going to be taken care of, and your tomorrow is already paid for. So when God was speaking that man has become like one of us, not because God is the sinner. No, he was saying, he was seeing the future because the seed was already provided from the foundation of the earth. There was a line that God had already created which was going to produce a seed that will cross the devil's head. And once that seed arrives, at Calvary, at, Calvary, at Golgotha, Golgotha, and that seed will be planted and be a savior, then man will become like one of them. Man will become a son of God. Man, oh, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. This thing is not just to serve us, this is making us like God. What the devil lied about uh, to Adam. We are now getting it through Jesus Christ. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. God was not talking about then. Only he was talking about today. 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 We are living here. As sons of God. As daughters of God. And whatever will bind on us. Will be bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on us. Will be loosed on heaven. Oh somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Let me finish quickly. Child of God, this is where this is where why he did what he did. For Jesus was slain from the foundation of the earth. And the journey had to begin in heaven and end in heaven. You didn't hear it just say. The thing began with God is going to end with God. God knew you before you were in the womb of your mother. In between people and the devil will not determine where you're going to end. You began in God. You are finishing in God. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Man and demons will not determine your destiny. God has the key to your destiny. Sickness and disease will not sabotage your life. Powers of darkness will not hinder what God has said. You are so important to the kingdom of God. The best is yet to come. From today, your life is going to be better than hey. the past. Raise your hand and say, He knew me. He 
knew you before. That's why the watermelon came. He knew you before. That's why the fennel came. He knew you before. That's why the rivers came. Everything you need is already there because he knew you. We are the generation that is going to reveal who he is. Clap your hands seriously to God. My purpose here on earth is to reveal who he is. Is to reveal who he is. Is to glorify him. Is to magnify him. That's the reason why I'm here. Now I look back and say he put everything in place for me to reveal him. Therefore, I'm going to get everything he put in place from today. And nothing by any means will hurt me. Listen to this. Jesus on the cross he spoke powerful words and he finished by saying it's finished. And when you look at it, it looks finished. But child of God, it was just the beginning. It was just the beginning. I say it was just the beginning. Because Revelation chapter 5, Jesus had already died. And John, his stepbrother, was able to go to heaven. And they play him a video. And they replayed him a video of what took place when Jesus was dying. Revelation happened after Jesus was from the dead. And in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, and he said, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat, sit down please, sit on the throne with a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book. Now this is Jesus had already died and to loose the seals thereof. Verse 3. And no man in heaven, no in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book therein, or to look thereof. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah was there before 2,000 years ago. People of God. God prepared. Your times now. He planned things in place. He's going to open your eyes. You see your wife. You see your husband. You see where your wealth is. They say that they discovered oil they in Bulisa. Yeah, but oof. They're right. They have just discovered it. They did not put it there. You miss what I just said. The oil you're talking about. Or the gold they've just found. They did not put it there yesterday. Because they, they God put it there a long time ago. We were just blinded. Billions the we need God we are just blinded in our the eyes. The blood of just gonna wash you. Tell the person next to you. I've been casting 
other demons every day. But you are not changing. I was seeing that you ain't changing. Now I'm casting away the spiritual blind Let your eyes be open. That you may see what God prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. God prepared for you to lift your entire village out of poverty and stuff. Remember this. Every time the devil knocks on your door, there is another level God is taking you to. Glory to God. I was just telling the family of Honorable Nyamutoro. You know, the devil knocked on their door. Her mother got cancer. They are elders here in the church. So we kept praying and believing. She nearly died. We believed God. And so the father told us this morning, the husband, he said, I have no hope, I have no joy, the children, everybody. It seems that the devil was saying, you ain't going to go over there. I'll take you out now. People are God. In the name of Jesus. Whatever you've gone through. Something huge is coming to you. That is going to smite your enemies. And they'll kneel down on back. May God start with you who are standing up. May God start with you who are standing up. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Let me finish with this. So what happened? God healed her. And three months later, among 500 plus members of parliament, first time in parliament, first time in parliament, She finished the university. university. Following year, run for parliament. parliament. First time in parliament, you were parliament. cabinet minister. minister government. Not to go and work on it. But minerals, energy, minerals, where the money is, where the diamonds are, where the gold, where the marble, where the marble is. That's where she has begun from. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody has bewitching you. They prepared that for her long ago. When I look at you, since the year began, God told me this church you have the wealthiest, richest people in Uganda. This year, you are beginning to become a billionaire. Amen. Take it if you want it in Jesus' name. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Let me finish with this. Now, so what, what happened? In Revelation chapter 5, he said, I cried because and nobody was able. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed over the and opened the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I behold and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Child of God, when Jesus was walking here, who saw seven horns on him? Who saw seven eyes on him? None. He looked no more. But here in heaven, the revelation is coming. Jesus was walking on earth with seven horns and seven eyes on him. But no human saw that. 
And he reveals the seven horns and the seven eyes as the spirits of God. So Jesus yes. was walking with seven spirits of God. And nobody saw it. And nobody saw it. Child of God, you are about to operate on another level that the world doesn't know. No wonder he walked on water. No, no wonder he raised a rotten man back to life. No wonder he fed people out of a little food. No wonder the wind obeyed him. He had the seven spirits of God. And this is what the seven spirit of God can be understood here on earth. This is how you can understand when someone has the seven spirits of God. This is what happened to him. Before I, I, I talk about the seven spirits of God. Verse 7 please. Quick, 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 quick. I have to rush. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. He came and took the book. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them a harp and golden vows full of orders, which are the prayers of the saints. Do you know what Jesus did for us, Pastor? People, saints, not sinners, used to pray. Their prayer. And all they could go, the farther they could go, end up with elders. And the best the elders could do is put them in Machupa. The prayers has never reached God. The prayers could not cross to get there because there was a document there was a decree Paul writes it this way he said when he died he removed that document out of the way so that our prayers somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah No wonder from Enoch to John no prayers were answered. You didn't hear what I just said. Great men of repute. Great men of power. They were praying. They were interceding. And the prayers could go to heaven. And even reach in the Holy of Holies. But they ended up in the hands of elders. But when he was able to remove the book from the hand of him who sat on the throne, listen to what happened. Listen to what happened. And they sang a new song. For the first time since creation, the elders sang a new song. Things begin to shift in heaven. That's why we are getting new life. You are getting a new song. You are getting a new joy. Something happened. And they said, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us. My God, even the elders were not redeemed. God. My God. 
They were not redeemed. You've redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Child of God, these guys were very close. They were near but never close. None of them could cross and come where Paul was. So, 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 so. Until Jesus was slain. Adam, Adam walked with God. He walked with God. He named everything God did. But he wasn't a son of God. God. Because he wasn't redeemed. Christ has redeemed us. Galatians chapter 3. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Our redemption began. Redemption is a status. Redemption is a position. Redemption is an adoption. It is a transformation. Verse 10, please. And has made us unto our God. At Fuderikatonda Wafe. Kings. Bakabaka. These elders. Abakadevan. God had wanted them to be kings. But they were just elders. They had not translated into kingship. Because king are the one who orders. Remember in Job he says, shall decree a thing. Kings are the one decreeing. None of these elders, though they were in heaven, though they were holding harps before God, though they were holding harps of prayers of saints, could decree a thing. They were supposed to be priests. Priests are the one who prophesies, who releases it. The king decrees and the priests release it. But they could release zero until he died on the cross. And he took the book. Now they were able to enter into their office. What Jesus did 2,000 years ago causes you to step into your rightful position. You're not hearing what I'm saying. What he did 2,000 years ago makes you a king, makes you a priest. You decree things that shall be established. You command things. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. The first Adam walked with God, talked to God. God breathed in him. He could not even tell the devil, shut up. He couldn't fight the devil in the garden. Because only the redeemed, only those with authority, as kings, only those have anointing, as the priests, can tell the devil, go back where you came from. Am I talking to anybody in the house? You are the only one who can tell Lucifer, shut up and leave. He died to give you power. He died to redeem you. He died to use you. He died to fill you. He dies to make you one of them. Raise your hand. Say, He's my father. Say it again. He's my father. Say, God is my father. God is my father. Say it again. God is my father. Say it with a loud voice. God is my father. You're a child of God. 
You're a child of God. You're a child of God. Because of the blood. Because of him dying on the cross. Oh my God. You are a child of God. Jesus said I'm coming to get you. Where I am you will be. He gave us his name. We can use the name of Jesus. We can use the blood of Jesus. We can use the spirit of God. We, we are children of God. We are children of God. Somebody jump and dance. Say I'm a child of God. Say I'm a child of God. Go back to Revelation. Let me finish with this. Verse 11. And I behold and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. We already calculated that one is 100, 100 trillion. Child of God from a few to trillion. From a few to trillion because of what Jesus did. Because of what Jesus did. God has called you to be a king and a priest because of what Jesus did. Verse 12, verse 12, verse 12, verse 12. Verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, where there is the lamb that was slain. Now the seven spirits of God on this earth, we understand them like this. When they say someone has got the seven spirits of God, this is what he will manifest. Number one, power. These seven spirits, Jesus wants you to have them. So from today, you are going to manifest power. Amen. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You are moving in a position of power. You are moving in a position of power. I say you are moving in a position of power. You're going to manifest number two. Riches. 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 On this earth, they will see riches. Take it. You like it. You want it. Number three. You're going to manifest wisdom. You're going to manifest wisdom. Number four. You're going to be very strong. For they that are strong, they do exploits. You're going to construct your village. Everybody's going to be amazed. And you're going to be honorable. The Bible says Jabez was honorable. Those who are honorable, God answers them. You're going to manifest honoring. Honorable and representing. You are representing somebody. You're working for some people. Million in number Yabantu. A million people. Ogena Jiri Sange Migate Jivamu Bekare. You're gonna feed them with bread from your personal bakery. Not honorable who ask you for fuel. Because you are honorable, God will enlarge your territory. May what the Lord did to Jabez do it to you today. They manifest the glory. You are going to manifest the glory. Everywhere you go, the devil will pack his bags and leave. 
you're going to manifest blessings. Yes. Whether local or global, you're going to manifest the blessing. People are going to look at and you. And they will see a blessed man or a blessed woman. Who desires it? Lift your hand and say thank you for dying for me. You did all this for me because you loved me. You want me to be like one of you. I accept. I can't hear you. You're not talking to me or your neighbor. You are talking to God. Say, I accept. I'm going to be like one of you on this earth. I will manifest your glory. The Bible said in John 17, sit down please as I finish. Jesus said, he's now talking to the Father. Because he's one of with the Father. He's one with the Father. He's one with the Father. This is what he says in John 17. He said, Father, I have manifested your word. I didn't just speak your word I have manifested I have demonstrated your word I have lived your word I have become your word John 17 so speak it as you we're going to shout it as you Jesus said it now it's you to say it one two three go uh, uh, I said one two three and you start reading one two three go hey what is the scripture where's the scripture on the screen one two three go I have manifested thy name unto the man which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. In other words, in these 8 billion people on planet Earth, those of you who are doing business, architecture, architecture industry, lawyers, whatever, God is going to give you people where you will manifest his name. Amen. They will come like customers. They will come like friends. They will come like peers. They will come like comrades. They will come like enemies. They will come like foreigners. You will manifest his name to them. You will manifest his name. You will show them that I am one of them. I'm part of the kingdom of God. So you see, Jesus didn't just wash us. No. Mm -hmm. He made us one of them. He made us his own. We are his children. He lives here. We live in him. We move in him. Now it's time to manifest. To show forth the world. That he is the only one. Raise your hand. Say, I'm here. I'm going to manifest you. In Jesus' name. I bless your name, Lord. You've given me a chance to manifest you. That you are real. In Jesus' name. Amen. Saints. When we first went to Karamoja, it was so dry. It was so tough. Even this season, the heat was so much. 
But we kept on believing. We planted when even the dust could rise. That is very far. There is a better picture of planters. Huh? Don't give me that one. One the big one. When you even see the dust is rising. But yesterday. It rained cats and dogs. And one Karamojong man approached our staff. And he said, I've lived in this community for a long time. He said, ever since you people came, we have received rain. We've never received anything. Child of God. Yesterday it was 16 millimeters of rain. That only rains in areas like, like Lake Victoria, Benson. Never in northern Uganda. What does that tell you? We are not just there. We are there to manifest the name of the Lord. The purpose why God saved you and brought you is to manifest his name. When God gives you a Lord, he's not going to give you one. They will be about 20. When God gives you a house, he give you plenty. Let me leave you alone. You are now operating in Pavlov's theory. You are thinking about your meat. I say, God gives you something. They give it to you in abundance. That you may manifest the glory of God. When the rain came, you may be seated. I, I was happy because this manifests my father. Drought is, does not represent God. Starvation does not. Death does not. Healing, deliverance, miracles, signs and wonders manifest God's presence. And that's what we see here, the miracles and other That's why I don't miss tomorrow. But now we have a problem. Because we did not put the seed in the ground, the grass or the weed is already on the ground. It has got water in a few days to spring up. If we had put our seed in the ground, it would come and overtake. But now we'll have to weed. It's another problem. Saints, so I told my staff, I said, guys, this is what we're going to do. You have only Easter Sunday. Monday, we are rushing you the seeds. I told the guys who keep the seeds, we are rushing you the money Monday morning. We want the seeds you have. We need to rush them in Karamoja so that we plant this wheat. With that kind of rain, you will spend a hundred million to weed three thousand acres. It's not wise. So this morning, I want you to do whatever you can so that we raise the money for the seeds. The fuel. And they start planting the whole of this week. I'm amazed how God looks at, at us and then he said, rain. The problem we procrastinate. Today I'll be saying, uh -huh. now I'm done. Something about timing 
releases manifestation. If you do something in the wrong time, it will not manifest. Or it will manifest but later. So it's very important. So I'm going to ask some of you to really, really think and believe and love as usual and give. If each one of us can give 100,000, we'll go through. 50,000, we'll go through. 20, 10. We are here to manifest his name. So if you've got a seed of 100,000, the ushers are standing with an envelope, put your name on it. History will tell because it will manifest back in you. In Jesus' name. So let me, let me, let me come over here. We're going to stand over here. Others will come late. You, you. Others were giving seeds for, for fertilizer, whatever it is. Now we have moved into getting the seeds quickly. God will use that seed for his glory. He will use that seed for his glory. You have a hundred thousand shillings. Bring it for the glory of God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You were crucified. Lay behind the stone. You live to die. You've got your 50,000 shillings. Please come and join us. Let the Lord use you mightily. His glory is revealed. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Lord. Get your 20,000, your 10,000. Get your 5,000. Come and join us. Carry your seed with you. Let us manifest his name. Because child of God, you're going to manifest. In the building, you're going to build. Some of you have houses already. But you need an office where the world will come to visit you. The days of renting is coming to an end. You're going to manifest. You're going to manifest his kingdom. Everywhere you go, the people will see and say, this is a child of God. You're going to manifest money. People fear somebody to manifest. You're going to manifest money to the world. Money. The amends reduced. Listen, Joseph or Matthias demonstrated money. And the people said, he's a rich man. Because we don't know how much money he gave Pontius Pilate. We don't know how much money he spent on digging that grave. He manifested money. And they said, the man is rich. From today, may you manifest money. Amen. Lift your seed. Say, Heavenly Father, I'm here to manifest my to manifest your name, manifest your word in Karamoja. Even those of you watching by television today, 
plant your seed give today we are planting and planting and planting and planting father we are ready to manifest your glory now release sacks and sacks of money in the hands of your servants opportunities blessings connections money deals contracts in the name of Jesus promotion increment of salary I bless your name open the nations open the countries open the lands for your glory in Jesus name we are manifesting your name in Jesus name go ahead and give thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Lord dollars for fertilizers whatever it is you to bring it as well in Jesus name crucified you give to die rejected on the Lord Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall Thought of me About your hand everybody on this wonderful day we remember our troops we remember our troops in Somalia wherever they are deployed in Congo wherever they are we remember Israel we pray that the spirit of God will be upon them and the Lord will do wonderful things in Jesus name these are students let them come let them come let the kids come. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let me pray 
pray for this kid. Okay, give him my she, she has a little testimony. Give you praise, Jesus. Give you praise, Jesus. Which school is this? Give you praise. Give you praise in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. I just brought here, I just came here to testify. Uh, I was looking for a job for some good time. Now God kept on showing me dreams. Showing other shows so that the more he kept on showing me that dream, I kept on praying and praying about it. Then eventually that uh, the job came. But it wasn't easy. I kept on praying and praying and praying. So when the job came, before the job coming, I promised God, I told God in Tinja, Njamua, the first fruit, I whatever, Dinene, Amazin, Nazin. So when the job came, and remember what you told me, you have to so and then also to testify. So here I am, I brought my first fruit. And uh, I thank God for the job he provided for me. It's a good job, I'm so happy about it. Then another thing, I thank God for taking away, I had neighbors who are witches. Like in their home, I think it had a shrine. Like, 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 Staying and staying and staying. So I just was kept on praying and praying and praying. Yes, so I just kept on praying. Yes, 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 I just kept If you are here, you've never given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You don't have a home church. You want Miracle Center to be your home church. You can come forward.
Jesus. His children in mighty and use them mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank God for honorable, honorable and the minister. Minister of government. You know, after we suffer, they can drop you. But she was retained. Hey. So we thank God. You want to say, greet the people, please. This is a very powerful day and just. Praise the living God. Praise King Jesus. My name is Beatrice Akelo. Akori. I am the minister in state for economic monitoring in the office of the president. The minister of state. My story with this church came from very far. God started lifting me from down up to where I am. I'm here to glorify the name of the Lord. And I want to thank God for you, Pastor Kayanja. I trace the anointing in you. Actually, today when you were preaching, I was, I was seated up there. I was filled with the power. I was like, God, I also need this power. <laughs> Praise the living God. The reserve was done. You know, wind, it can be mild, but it can go. But this wind made me still to remain in my tokens. I give God the glory. Let's continue praying for His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, for wisdom, knowledge, good health, as we continue to steer this country into prosperity. And I love this church because He has given us breakthrough in prosperity, especially me. So, what Pastor Kayanja is doing is in line with NRM. Manifesto. It is in line with uh, count Uganda's priorities. Uganda because we are propelling this country to prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless all of us. 
Amen. Father, Lord God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I told you, Yoga, Lord, is keep on blessing us. We have several, several cabinet ministers here. This church, members of parliament, and uh, various people in different uh, positions. And you are next in line. I say you are next in line. Stand up on your feet. Say, Lord, thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. I am going to manifest your glory. And Father, I pray for your people that you pass them through this great weekend where we remember the price heaven paid. My Father, you paid for our prosperity, you paid for our salvation, you paid for our minds, you paid for our souls, our families. May we manifest your glory. Lord, we bless our country, we bless Africa, we bless the world, we bless Israel. My Father, we even pray for those innocent Palestinians who are suffering that you will be able to deliver them from the grip of the terrorists so that they can have their own place. Lord, we give you praise and glory because you wish that everybody will prosper. We pray for our children, those in a hospital. We pray for those who are working overseas. We pray, my Father, that you'll prosper them. Our troops in Somalia, in Congo, wherever they are deployed, that you'll protect them. We give you, Lord, thank you for the victory you've given us against our enemies and you will manifest your glory. We thank you. We plead the blood of Jesus over everything we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pray those you left behind at home that they may remember you over lunch. We, we will see you tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name at 5 p.m. God bless. Trembled on the ground It's a fall And thought of me Above all Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall There is another miracle over here. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus.
We are not just a church. We are a family. We are a community that loves Jesus. And we want you to experience the Holy Spirit in a powerful way.
of the Lord as will come the rivers of life choir. Hallelujah. God bless you.
malaika ya jam na mugamba ntito tyarate yesu azukide agenze ye galira ya gawe ya yogira iyo je muna musanga mwina basibule Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did it at the cross just for you. Tell your neighbor just for you. Happy Easter, ladies and gentlemen, dear friend. Okay. Mwana 
Muziki dene vitala, ne migo, ngomu nyazi. Na veranga na mbobri chomu yekalu, nga temu wanku hata. Na hiki nukia kisera acha mwe. Na obu inza wasitano kwa kizikiza. Mumukanga vle. Otepo kututero musibo omuku mbage ene yoku itaku. Tutere, balava. On a tué. Comme elle est pour moi, c'est un homme. Oui, non. Mon coup est Thank you.
Aleluia. Aleluia. Yes, he's risen. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow with confidence. You know? Yeah.
Hallelujah. Somebody give Jesus a hand clap of praise. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Let us sing this hymn together. Hallelujah. Are you ready to sing with us? All right. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. Through Christ in me. Let us sing it together from the top. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love. My deep and bound. Let us sing together to this I hold everyone. To this I hold. My hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. Chains are released 
Somebody clap your hands to Jesus is worthy of praise. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We welcome all of you. Thank you for coming. To God be the glory. I promise I'm going to be brief. I wanted you to worship him. He's worthy of praise. He's our God. He's our Savior. And we bless his name. You look so beautiful. You may be seated. We welcome those of you visiting us for the first time. Thank you for coming. We are grateful to the Lord who has brought you in Jesus' name. Those of you watching by television, you may be at home eating right now. We are still worshiping God in Jesus' name. The past two services have been wonderful as we praise and thank God. 
the question remains why the love why the sacrifice why the price and why is he coming back again these questions can only be answered by us going back to the book of Genesis. But before we go, today is a day of thanking God. We thank God for who he is, what he did for us. We're supposed to be firewood for hell. But instead, he paid the price. He died for us. What can we do but to thank him? What can we do but to stop and gaze at the sacrifice. When you look at it all, he was rich, became poor, that you and I can be rich. He left his glory in heaven, came down and walked on dust roads. He didn't make the dust roads. He left materials for us to use to build good roads. Because in heaven, they're building roads with gold. I was here, the lakes over there is crystal. For us here, we just build takataka. And when he came, he was so shocked because he saw man not in the image the way he created him. He was disappointed. Man was full of anger, bitterness. But instead, he loved us. He stayed with us until he died for us. And even when he died and, and rose again, he didn't leave us alone. He left the Holy Spirit. For that reason, we are grateful. For that reason, we come before him and say thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the price you pay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So let's bring our offerings, our tithe, our giving as a thanksgiving in Jesus' name. He's good. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name in Jesus' name. In the past two services, we've been coming here section by section to say thank you. Not just to take up an offering. Not just to, to, you know, to throw in your offering. But take a pause. Ponder. And think about these things. He really died for you. So let's do that. We start with this section and this section. You can come. When you come through here, go back this way. If you come this way, go back that way. And that way. So that you, you don't block yourself. Say these words with me. Hold your offering. Lift it up. Everybody. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for dying for me. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And I love you. I worship you. Thank you for what you did. What you're about to do. And many more things. My family. My work. My country. My world. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Start with this section. section. Give amazing grace. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the nail, peace, and
people in this section and in this section. Our section here, you know, You may be seated. I hope you've greeted the person next to you. We have a beautiful, beautiful flowers. Malina and her father decorated this place. Beautiful. We have uh, a photo booth. So you will get your picture. More of looks like uh, the stage, but not this one, but it has words of Christmas and I mean Easter and then take pictures and send it to the people with the love from Miracle Center. I'm going to be brief because I know if you delay here they'll eat all the food from you. The question is why will the Son of God come down pay the price die for us why will he do that? What was his intention? In order for you to know this, you'll have to go to Genesis chapter 1. And you see how God created everything. Amazingly. It says in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. But the earth was void. And uh, there was no formation. And darkness covered the earth. But the Spirit of the Lord kept on hovering on the surface of the deep. And then God said that there be light. So you could see why is God investing too much? Listen to this child of God. The investment reveals intentions. Investment reveals intentions. If you don't expect anything, Thing, then you can't invest more. But when you invest in something heavily like God did, his only begotten son, there has to be a reason and there has to be an intentional intention and there must be a purpose why he did it. So this is what we are looking at. So he causes light to shine on this darkness. And there was light. He separates the lights from the darkness. He calls the dark night. He calls the day 
the, the light, light day. And that was the first day. So he's now employing a lot of activities. He wants to watch over the earth. That's why he put the lights first. And then from there I begin to create a lot of stuff. And uh, he caused the herb to grow. The grass and the herb and the herb had a seed. The herb had a seed. Of course he created the um, the, the trees that bear fruit. And, and this is shocking that before he made you, he made fene. So where, that, where does that put you? <laughs> he made a watermelon before he made you. It's not that he made it first before you. No, he was preparing it for you. You see, the amazing thing is that God had you in mind so he never wanted you to look for things. So he put the things first. He put a firmament between the heavens so that he may be able to separate waters creating lakes, creating oceans, creating things so that this earth is habitable for generations to come. One of the things that amazes me about God that he knew will fly one day so he put space there. He knew we will go to the, to the moon so he created the atmosphere Atmosphere. He knew one day that we will need to trade between us, countries and continents. So he allowed water bodies like Indian Ocean, like Pacific Ocean, whereby ships can move on. God is so amazing and is not surprised by our artificial intelligence. He knew we would reach that level. So child of God, everything you need on your journey, God has already provided for it. It is already there. You just don't see it. You just don't know it is available. But God has already put it in place. That's how he knew Adam will need a help. So he put a rib through which her cords will be among all the ribs. God will never be taken surprise because he knew you before you were in the womb of your mother. He knew where you're going to live. He knew where you will go. Even those people who migrate and go to other countries, he knew it. He knew one day these people will move on. Child of God, that's why this year is setting a table before your enemies and he's going to do great and mighty things. This morning, in the first service, I was talking to the family of Honorable Nyamtoro. I said, could you imagine? In January, they came to my office and they were praying. There were certain things the father was praying for. That was not one of them. But when she came after university, she came here, she, she thanking God for winning. She came to be prayed for to win the elections. And she went. And the position she was fighting for is named by all, all candidates from all over the country. It's a national youth. So you don't, you don't just run a constituency. No, no, no. Everybody from Western Uganda, you know, they have to vote you. So that's, that's that was not a simple thing. First time in parliament, I mean, she goes in through parliament. Now, first year in parliament, you appointed minister. Government president, not, just a, minister. not just a minister, See minister Choka. but a minister in charge of minerals. Child of God, so her mother, Nina. before all this, of appointment and other things, she gets cancer. And she nearly died. Prayed, believed God, and God healed. So the home didn't have joy. The home didn't have joy. But lo and below, the appointment comes. 
Now there is a lot of joy. What we were praying for three months, he found himself in the biggest gate of State House. And the president was asking him a lot of stuff. What is your education? Where have you been working? What has been this? What has been this? What is the pastor? What I thought is impossible has been possible in one open gate. This year, you are becoming a billionaire. There is a reason why. There is a reason why. God is going to take you to another level. So let's go quickly through the book of Genesis. So he said, I, 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 he ordered a hub, a hub to be created. A hub to be created. And uh, which bear which bear seed? It yields seed. It yields. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb yielding seed. So there was a particular herb among herbs. You know, herbs are medicinal. And as though as much as they are food, but they are medicinal. So medicine is what heals a nation. Medicine is what heals us. But in this medicine that God was creating to heal the earth, there will be one herb that will create a seed. Now, this is Genesis chapter 1. Man sins in Genesis chapter 3. He falls. And God said, and the seed of a woman will crush the devil's head. Child of God, you are wondering, what are you talking about? God knew that it will come out of things that brings healing to a nation. And one of the things that he brings healing is repentance, his holiness, his righteousness, his faith, his prayer, his giving, his love, his oneness. That is the hub. If you put those things together, a nation will produce a seed through which it will begin to get healing. Okay. Those things causes a nation to heal. It is a hub. But this herb was yielding a seed. And the seed was the seed of a woman. Do you know that the earth had to produce the quality of a Mary, the quality of a woman who will be able to bear the child? One of the greatest revelations you should have always that God has put something inside of you that is so unique, that is so powerful, and He's going to use that one. He's going to anoint that one. He's going to touch that one to cause you to go to a level you've never been before. So why will God invest his son? Why will he do everything like that? Because you are made in his image. Because you are one of a kind. You are so dear to him. He did not do this to show to the devil that I'm powerful. He did it to show you that he cares for you and he loves you and you are his image. That's why he created the rivers. He created the mountains. He created the gold. The Oil. He created everything to show you that you are important, to show you that you don't have to struggle to live. He provides everything. You are the end game. You are the target of his, plan, of his plan. And he loves you so much. That's why he did what he did, that he had to bring his son to die on the cross. Now, Jesus came, yes, so yeah, yeah. died on the cross. Now for he was crucified. Yeah, I'm and that was great. And he said, it's finished. But child of God, that was not just enough. Much more needed to be done. When you go and you see in Revelation chapter 5, that's when you are completely realizing that there was a greater job Jesus had to do here on earth and in heaven. When Jesus said, pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because we began in heaven. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. We began in heaven. Heaven is the one to finish us. Let me say it again. Heaven is the one to, to finish you. Your destiny will not be sabotaged by people. Your witch doctors and your enemies have no power to stop the blessing that is coming your way. Heaven has decided to bless you. You're going to be blessed today. 
heaven has decided to increase you to take you to another level no one will stand in your way because heaven decided to send Jesus to create man now one of the things that is going to bless you when Adam sinned the scripture tells us that God said now man has become like one of us he didn't say that when he created him and breathed into him he didn't say that when he gave him a wife but he said that when Adam sinned and is naked you must understand this child of God that when God speaks a statement it takes care of the past the present and the future when God said I have forgiven you it means he has forgiven you in the past present and in the future when he said I have blessed you it means all your debts are finished all your current curses are cancelled and your future is taken care of God never spoke on one point he speaks because he's the same yesterday today and forever so when he says it's finished, it means it was finished. Everything of the past, everything of the current, and everything of the future. May the Lord bless you today. So child of God, so he said to Adam, to, to, he said to, to, to himself and others, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, he said, now man has become more like one of us to know good and evil and to know lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. He said, now man has become like one of us. Was Adam like one of them? Naked? Lost? No, he was not talking about that. When he said the seed of a woman will cross the devil's head. Go back to that verse. Please. The seed of the woman will cross the devil's head. In Genesis 3, 15. And I'll put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Verse 23. He said, now man has become like one of us. By providing the seed, the other seed which come out of a heart, healing virtues, healing virtues, Malachi 3, Malachi 4, the son of, of righteousness will rise up for you with healing in his wings. That's why Jesus came as a healer, as a balm of Gilead. Righteousness, holiness brings healing. And out of that, a seed of righteousness will rise out of it to crush the devil's head. Child of God, get ready. Now, that's why he said man has become like one of us. Because man was going to become now a child of God. Man was going to be redeemed. Man was going to be born again. Man was going to be washed away. Well, his sins were going to be washed away. And man was literally going to be a child of God. Was going to be a God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lift your hand and say, I'm a child of God. Adam was a man of God. He was never a son of God. He worked with God, moved with God. He didn't know God. In fact, he wanted to be like God. And Satan tempted him on that. But you and I, because of the blood of Jesus, we are brothers to Jesus. As many as believed on him, he gave them power to become sons of God. And Jesus said, where I am, you will go. And you live with me forever. We're going to live in heaven. Forever. Adam lived 930 years. Here on earth. You're going to live a thousand years. With God. With Jesus. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus and give him praise. 
So that shows you that God was intending to have you. He really wants you to be with him. That's why Jesus said, I'm coming to die for you, to redeem you, to set you free, and I'll come and take you. Where I am, you will be there with me. God wants you to be with him. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. But before you go, there are certain things that we have to do here on earth. So that's why he said man has become like one of us. He was not talking about then only. He was talking about 2,000 years late or 2,000 years ago where Jesus came and died on the cross and paid the price for us. And we became child of God. For Galatians 3 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. So why did he die and rose again? Because the job had to be done on earth where sin began and finished it in heaven. Man had to start in heaven and finish it back in heaven. Now, Revelation chapter 5 this is going to bless your heart. When I read it, I said, Oh Lord, how comes I didn't see this before? Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. He said, And I saw in the, in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Go ahead. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the, angel, the seals thereof. Even this strong angel couldn't do it. And no man was found. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And no man in heaven, nor in the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the angel elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Go ahead. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent from heaven into the earth. Now John is in heaven. They are doing a replay of what happened when Jesus died on the cross. And he now is watching. He's seeing Jesus whether to go and remove that book from the hand of the one who sits on the throne. Child of God, there was no man who could do it. There was no man who could do it. Elijah, Moses, everybody, none. John the Baptist, none. But the Son of God. The good thing is this that Jesus, yes. the Lamb of God, had seven horns and seven spirits. Now, when Jesus was here on earth, Nobody saw horns. Nobody saw seven, seven eyes. But they said that these seven spirits, these are the seven spirits of God. No wonder he walked on water. He turned water into wine. He raised the rotten man. No wonder he was doing incredible things because he had seven spirits of God. Child of God, what Jesus did for us, he released this spirit upon us when we are born again. Right now, people are going to see you on earth as you are. But the things you are going to do will surprise them. Jesus was here manifesting the Father. He was manifesting the Father. In, 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 in John chapter 17, verse 15 something, he said, Father, I've, been, I've manifested your name unto men which thou hast given me. Thine they were, thou givest them to me, and they have kept thy word. Shout of God, one of the things that's going to happen, you are going to manifest God among the people you grew up with. The reason of you being saved and Jesus coming into you yes, and joy. staying with you no, and loving you. No, he wants you to manifest his glory no, to no, everyone. No, the people are going to come no, when no, they are lost. No, but you're going to manifest no, his glory no, to them. No, Miracle signs and wonders no, are going to no, happen no, to you. No, 
So there was nobody who was able to open the seal and get the book except the Lamb of God that was slain. And, and, and Revelation chapter 5 is amazing. It says, one of the elders said to me, weep not. Verse 6, please. Verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now this lamb that was slain now does the final thing. He removes the book. Apostle Paul said there was a decree which was against us. It was standing in the way. Jesus came and took it. He took it out of the way. I'm telling you what he did. Book of Revelation reveals it. That is Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. Blotting out the handwritten of ordinances that were against us. Which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way. Nailing it to the cross. But now he's in heaven. He's now getting the book. And he's opening the seven seals. Child of God revelation is coming to you. By the spirit of a living God. Now watch this. Verse 8. Verse 8. And when he had taken the book, when he took the book, which means before he took the book, there was no movement. There was no power. There was no answers. There was nobody who could cross that line until he took the book. Somebody say, I'm glad he took the book. The four beasts and the, four and the twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden bells full of orders, which are the prayers of the saints. Now this shook me that all along saints were praying all the years, all the millennia, they were praying and their prayers was being bottled by these elders. No prayer crossed the line. It never came to God. It was stuck with the elders. No wonder John prayed. The Baptist and he didn't get the answer. No matter everybody was praying and they couldn't get a breakthrough because the prayers could not reach God. There was ordinances which were against us. We could not have a breakthrough until Jesus died. And when he died, he was able to take the book and when he took the book the thing was removed out of the way all our prayers have been pocketed and, 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 and bottled by elders when I saw that I said Lord you did more than what we know you did more than what we know. Verse 9, please. And they sang a new song. These elders were singing old songs until Jesus did it. Then the music changed. May the music change in your home. Oh, hallelujah. Revival is coming to your family. May music change. May words change. May everything change. They said, what Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. These guys, the elders, were closer to the throne room. They could even see the book, but they were not redeemed. They were not redeemed. It's like Adam. Adam was working with God. You know, Adam was never born as a kid. Adam was grown, grown up. He was created grown up. He didn't struggle for food. He, when he got married, he never paid dowry. Adam did not have all the problems we have. He didn't look for a job. The moment he was created, God say, you name what I do. It's, what a privilege to be employed by God. Whatever he does, you mention and they pay you a garden. That is Adam. He didn't have to struggle. He didn't have anything. All he wanted was to be like God. And he thought he would be God by eating a fruit. No, you don't become God by eating anything. You become God by believing in the Son of God. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. That's why he said, listen, 
Why do we have to become like God? Why do we have to become like God? Listen to me, young people. You're going to become God. Because the Bible says you are God. And you are the son of the Most High. God is a creator. You're going to create a new industry. You're going to manifest his glory. Oh, come on, somebody. You're going to manifest his glory. Your village is about to turn into a city. And they will call it your name. Oh, yeah. You're going to call it your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Psalms 82 verse 6 says, And I've said, You are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. Adam was a man of God, but not a child of God. But as many as believed on him, you know, you become a child of God when you believe. As many as believed on him, he gave them power. You become a child of God by believing and by receiving power. Am I talking to anybody here? Of the Holy Ghost. You believe in the blood of Jesus. You receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Not like Adam. Sing Adam. So now, sit down please. So what happened to them? In the book of Revelation, these guys said, you have redeemed us. So these guys were not redeemed. Yes, they were in the presence of God, but they were not redeemed. Christ has redeemed us from the cross of the Lord. Galatians chapter 3. So then they're now singing it. And they say from every kindred, from every tongue. I don't know what God language was listening. I believe it was Hebrew. And all of our languages. God needed an interpreter. But when Jesus died. And rose again. And went to heaven. Now your language. You can speak in Chinyarwanda. You can speak in Uganda. You can speak in Rucholi. And God will hear you. Can you clap your hands to Jesus my God. Verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. Child of God, you are about to become a king and a priest. What does a king do? You decree things and they are established. Before Jesus died, we could talk all we can. Nothing would happen. But when Jesus died and removed those decrees, now you can decree a thing and it shall be established for you. Because that's what a king does. A priest is the one who releases it. So you're going to speak it and release it. And it shall happen. Clap your hands to Jesus and give him praise. That's what he did for us. Verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne. And the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of that. That is already, we calculated that one is already 100 trillion. From 24 elders, now the thing is all over in heaven and on earth. What God did for us, hell is going to know. Heaven knows. The earth knows that you are the chosen generation. They already know. I said they already know. They already know. Satan already knows. Heaven knows that you are the chosen one. That you are the one who is going to manifest his glory. You are the one going to manifest everybody. They already know. They already know. You are going to have land. They already know. You are the head and on the tail. They already know that you are blessed of God. They already know. Tell the pastor next to you, say, they already know. They are the next big thing that is going to happen on our village. Glory to God. Verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, where is the lamb that was slain to receive power? Amen. 
and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Now Jesus came on earth with seven spirits of God which are the seven horns and the seven eyes. Now, that kind of a spirit of God on this earth, if I came here out of that office and I landed on the stage with seven eyes and seven horns, all of you will run away. All of you will take off. You will forget your shoes. You forget your bags of money. You may even leave your car outside <inaudible> there. You say, what way to preach is this? Something looks like Pastor Kanja just came out of his office. It has seven my hembes. Seven eyes on the thing. Pastor Arthur will jump through the glass. Pastor <laughs> So, God is going to release these seven spirits. And this is how you're going to manifest. Spirit number one is the spirit of power. God is going to move you in a position of power. You're going to be powerful in everything you do. Somebody say power. Power. At the beginning of this month, a family brought their daughter. You saw her on Friday. This girl had a rare skin disease. She had gone abroad to work. And they brought her like a mummy. She was bandaged. She was bandaged. Every part of her body was bleeding. Blind. The tears she was crying was past. She couldn't wear clothes. They put a sheet on her. Every part was bleeding past. She could not see. The pain was so much. You could even feel the pain. They had been to overseas. Hospitals. They had been in all the hospitals in Uganda. She was just leaking. The body, the skin was rotten. Her back was every part of her body, I'm telling you, even the toes. And they decided to bring her here in one of the services. That you see dropping is past. Is past. What you see dropping is past. In less than a month, on Friday they returned. God had opened her eyes. God was beginning to give her a new skin. Power! Power! There is power in Jesus' name. We are going to manifest God's power. Of course, here in Miracle Center, you know. You know. You know. Miracles do happen. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit. Say yes, the Lord. A girl, they brought a girl on Friday from Rukunjiri, completely paralyzed, pushed in a wheelchair, no hope for her. She was pushing everybody who pushed her around. 
She jumped out of the wheelchair. And she pushed everybody around. Child of God. The Lord is about to do wonderful things. This is how they brought her. This is how they brought her. Completely collapsed. Nothing. No, no energy. No strength. So they roll her in. Like a dead person. And within few hours, the power of the Holy Ghost came. And she started pushing the brothers, everybody. God is going to give you power. Somebody say power. Gamba power. That's why I don't, 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 don't miss tomorrow. 5 p.m. It's going to be three hours service of intensive, service. intense anointing service. service the, you're going to, you're going to feel the power of resurrection. You, you're going to know what I'm talking about. The power, you, 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 you will watch what is going to happen here tomorrow. Tomorrow at five. You're going to see people jumping from there to there. Your body will feel like he's on fire. Whatever is not supposed to be in your body will leave. And whatever needs to come in your body will come. Somebody say power. You're going to manifest the power of God. You're going to manifest the power of God. Lift your hands and it's time. It's time to manifest. Number two, you're going to manifest riches. I say you're going to manifest riches. You're going to manifest riches. I know when I say riches, many of you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're going to manifest riches. Joseph of Elimacia. Jesus was beaten yes, as Mubaga. though he doesn't have his own. Jesus was mistreated, yes, dragged down. He was treated like among the poor, among the, the sick, among the, the, the vagabonds. Until, jo until Joseph of Elimacia showed up and he manifested money. He asked for his blood. I don't know how much money he paid for the spoiler. They brought brand new linen. They brought a hundred pounds of spices. And then they buried him in a brand new tomb. In a garden by itself. You are going to manifest riches. You're going to build your village. You're going to put up a school there. You're going to put a hospital there. You're going to feed the hungry. You're going to build homes for the oil daddy. You're going to manifest riches. There are many people who show off money. For you, you are going to manifest riches. You're going to build industries. You're going to help people upgrade their lives. Glory to God. Lift your hand and say, I will manifest money. I will manifest riches. Number three, you are going to manifest wisdom. You're going to manifest wisdom. Like Joseph in Egypt, like Solomon, like everybody wise person. You will stand somewhere. They will bring a, a, a situation and God will tell you how to solve it, where to solve it, and how to solve it. You are going to manifest wisdom. You're going to manifest strength. 
Samson manifested strength. Samson, Daniel manifested Daniel, strength. They that know their God shall do exploits. How are we going to know that you got power and strength? Uh, when there is no more need for electrification in your village you are going to put solar power all over the village how are we going to know you are strong you buy your own cars and buy the cars to transport the villagers to the city how are you going to know your strong? You're going to build your personal economy. You're going to build your own apps. You're going to manifest honor. Jebez was a man of honor. And God enlarged his territory. How do you know that you're honorable when you've bought out the entire neighborhood? Glory. Glory. How we know you're... that the glory of the Lord is with you. In the name of you, you're going to meet every need. You're going to meet every need. People will have hope when they see you. Diseases will vanish when you appear. And lastly, blessings. I see that in Karamoja. Child of God, what we are doing in Karamoja is manifesting blessings. We are not under a curse. If you see what's happening in Karamoja, they, they send me a, a picture. When we first went to Karamoja, we bought a barometer so in order to study the wind and the rain so that it will determine what we plant when and where. And the highest millimeters of rain we got was about seven. But six, seven. That was a heavy rain. Yesterday, it was 12 millimeters. 12 millimeters. Karamoja was a desert. It didn't have rain. But since we went there, one Karamojong man said, since he told our team, since you guys came, the rain in Karamoja has increased. You are going to manifest blessings. Heaven is going to back you up. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The equipment we have there, right now I'm, I'm looking for money so that I put them under a shield, a shelter, because the rains are heavy. You know, the rain has overtaken us. We've been planting in the dry season, because that's, that's the right thing to do. You plant in the dry season. Two weeks before, the rain began, and we are planting 3,000 acres, but you could see the dust was rising. Now, when we haven't planted, we have an issue. The weed is going to grow because of the rain. Because the seed of the weed is already in the ground. It just waits wait for the rain. But I don't know why you humans, we wait for rain to start planting. Instead of planting before the rain, so that when the, when the rain comes, the crop will come up faster than the weed will. But now we have an issue. So we have to, we have to, to, to plant. So I told my team, the only break you have it is today. Tomorrow, I'm going to the seed, store, seed bank, get out of the seed. And I told them I'm bringing the money because the, blessed, the people of blessings, I'm going to meet the people who are blessed. Miracle send the people who are blessed. They're going to give me all the money I need. I'll get the seed and I will rush it to Karamoja and I'll plant 3,000 acres. We are called to be a blessing. Since we went to Karamoja, Mindset have changed. 
There is a picture I wanted you to see. It skipped my mind in the first service. The picture where many people were gathered and we are giving away clothes. The first picture. I wanted you to see how we, how we first went to Karamoja. How Karamoja was looking. How Karamoja was looking. When we went there and they were giving food and clothes. Little kids dressing up. It was not a good picture. But the clothes you gave. The mattresses you gave. Yeah. Now that one when they are already dressed. Okay. These are the people outside So you could see the picture. That's how it was. The kids. Grown up. That's how they were. Now show me the picture when we were giving them food. The recent one. See how neat they are dressed. My God. Many of them have been working on the field. On our camp. They have made some money. They are, they, are, they, are, they are buying things for themselves. We are giving them some food. See, see the picture. From the other one. To this one. It's because you are manifesting blessing. Raise your hand said I'm not broke. I am not under curse. I am blessed. Shout it again. I am blessed. I am blessed. And your blessings are going to increase. So that's how we're going to manifest the seven <laughs> spirits of God. The seven uh, uh, horns of God. The seven <laughs> eyes of God. But it happened because Jesus <laughs> died on the cross <laughs> for us. You know, there's a message <laughs> in Luke chapter 20 <laughs> something. That when, and they came to the place called Golgotha. Golgotha. <laughs> place of the skull and Christ was crucified there. Jesus died at the place of the skull. The skull is the home of our eyes. Vision is the home of our brain as a man thinks. The home of our ears the home of our confession the form of our smell if you don't know if you don't smell you don't know where you are if you don't speak you don't know what you want if you're not hearing you don't have no faith if you can't see you have no vision you perish Jesus died there this is where he died so that you can see better. You can think better. Speak better. Know where you are. Child of God, that's why. I told the people in the first service. I said I need seeds. Need fuels. We are a blessing. And you're going to be a blessing to your family. You're going to be a blessing to those who don't even love you. <laughs> Raise your hand and say, I am a blessing. Say it again. Say it again, I am a blessing. I am a blessing. You're going to be a blessing to your family. You are about to open a door in your family that has never been opened before. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Jesus, open a door for me. The song says, Jesus paid it all. 
disasperirò oh to him i owe see i'd left a he was just why the snow jesus paid it all oh to him i owe seen i'd left One more time come on sing to Jesus Jesus paid it all Oh to him I owe See You know we used to sing a song Many many times Omusajja ya nyamba The man help me out Omusajja ya nyamba That man help me out Jesus yes. helped you Ya kuyamba Ya nyamba ya nsumulula He delivered me he helped me Omusajja ya nyamba Yanyamba You know, child of God, he did more than what we believe, what we thought, what we know. It's time to release our faith and be what he wanted us to be. The amazing thing he said in John, in the, the gospel, he said, if you love me, you love my word. You, in other words, if you manifest me, I and the Father will come and dwell with you. He has made us his temple. He wants to live here. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I'm ready to manifest your glory. I'm ready to manifest your power. Manifest your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. What are we going to do? Please sit seated. Well, we are helping Karamojas, you know. So, I believe God, there are some people who can give a seat of 100,000 shillings. Others, 50,000. Others, 20. Others, 10,000. Others, 5,000. We need to rush the seat there. In Jesus' name. We've seen the climate change. The past three weeks has been very hot. In South Sudan, people are dying of heat. Waves. If God gives us rain, let's utilize it. Let's grow food. Let's feed the people. Let's manifest the seven spirits of God. Somebody just love. We give you praise, Jesus. You are so awesome, Lord. In Jesus' name. So if you got your 100,000 children, just lift your envelope and just come. Stand over here. We're going to make one confession. And the Lord is going to prosper us. Others can give a million. Those of you watching by television, use your momo pay, Airtel cord, MTN cord. Plant your seed wherever you are. Let's manifest the glory of God in Jesus' name. Let's manifest the glory of God, the power of God. We love you, Father. We exalt you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you gave yourself humanity. You did not wait for me to draw near to you, but you came to hear your voice calling. Everybody, do you see? Lady, what's wrong with you? Mama, teacher, you can I 
give you praise, Jesus. We tend to yes. I give you praise, Jesus. We tend to yes. to die at the root. I command this breast cancer to die at the root. Get off her. Get off her. You spit of death. Spit of death. Spit of death. Spit of death. You spit of death. Go! Get! Go! Get! Get out of her chest! Get off her lungs! Get off this body! With this power, you have raised me to God. Be the glory. Lift your hands. All the things you have done. And what a mighty God we serve. Pick up. Strong child. I give you praise easy. What a mighty God we serve. Bow before you, heaven and earth adore you. Breathe in, breathe out. 
Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Touch. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God we serve. Your presence is here, Lord. I, give you praise. I acknowledge your presence. Heal that woman, Lord. In Jesus' name. give you praise Jesus Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Jesus Jesus Lady rise up and be healed in Jesus name. Just walk. Just walk. I give you praise, Jesus. 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 Every growth and every tumor disappear in Jesus' name. Every spirit of death go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Strength come. Life come. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you praise, Jesus. 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 The hand of the Lord is upon you. For the Lord heals thee. For the Lord delivers thee. For the Lord blesses thee. Say, Lord, I am a blessing. My blessing will never stop. From today, I am a blessing. Because you have blessed me. Go ahead and plant your seed. In Jesus mighty name. The Lord will do great and mighty things. Oh Lord. For your name is great. And greatly to be praised. You are such a blessing. I give glory to your name. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and great. Dedicate this baby in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dedicate the baby in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great. Bless the baby in the name of Jesus. Then get this baby in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I give glory to your name. Dedicate the baby in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dedicate the baby in Jesus' name to your name. Oh Lord, bless us. For 
your name is great. We rebuke this cancer, this disease to die and leave you alone in Jesus' name. Get off your hand in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just dedicating these babies, these babies. I give glory to your name. Dedicate your babies. Glory to your name. Give you praise, Jesus. I give glory to your name, oh Lord. Glory to your name, most high, for your name is great and greatly to be. I give glory to your name, O Lord, glory to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give God. There is some oil here. Give the people oil, please. Oh Lord. Glory to your name. I'm praying for these little babies. Oh Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be great. You are blessed of the Lord. I give glory to your name. Bless, oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be. Give glory to your name, oh Lord, glory to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give you praise, Jesus. I give glory to your name, oh Lord, glory to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give you praise, I give you praise. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be.
Glory to your name. Oh. Lift your hands, everybody. Stand up on your feet. Tomorrow evening, 5 p.m., come early, get a seat. The Lord is going to do miracles with you. Raise your hands, say, Father, thank you. I now going to live the life you want me to live. If you've never given your life to Jesus, you don't have a home church, you want miracle center to be your church, please come forward. We'll take care of you. We'll pray for you. We'll love you. Hey, God bless you. Have a wonderful Easter and be with your family. Watch Channel 44. God richly bless. See you tomorrow.